Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Welcome back. I'm Pam Oliver. Well, Dallas head coach Mike McCarthy really ruffled some feathers this week, really irritating his Washington counterpart in Ron Rivera. In speaking to the Dallas media, McCarthy all but guaranteed that his team would come out of this game, this critical NFC East matchup, with a victory. McCarthy said, we are going to win this game. I am confident in that. Meantime, Ron Rivera spoke to his team about McCarthy's comments, comments that he said were a big mistake. Stake. He told us he expressed to his players, this game is not about me as your head coach, but the other guy made it about him. Kevin. I like it. Add a little spice to this rivalry on a gorgeous day. Feels like football in December. And here we go. Washington won the toss. They deferred. Corey Clement up to take it for Dallas. Up across the 25. And the Cowboys will start right there. As we will see Dak Prescott against Washington, a team that he has been very successful against. 7-1 record, 13 TDs to just one interception. Remember, last year did not play in any of these matchups. Both were won by Washington. Yeah, and as we mentioned in the open, I think a big part of what they can do to get this offense back on track, a little bit more like what we saw early in the year, is going to run through Dak in this passing game. Give it to Elliott on the run game on the first try, and there's not much there. Trying to get Ezekiel Elliott going. He has been quiet dealing with that knee injury for a while, and you see their ranks overall. Offensive line is whole. Connor McGovern now starting his fourth straight game on the left side, although we just saw Connor Williams in as a fullback there. And the three receivers, Cooper, Lamb, and Gallup, really playing together for just a second time. They haven't played together for the most part all season. Second down, Prescott quick hitter over the middle. Dalton Schultz has it, tackled immediately. It'll bring up a third and short. Here's the big story today. Washington was already short their two starting defensive ends, right? Now they're down two more. Casey Tuhill and James Smith-Williams both on the COVID list. Their guys that are playing today have barely played in the NFL. Those are their total career snap counts. It's a huge story, third and short. They run it, they, Ooh, we'll see, I think he's got it. And that last finish of the run will move the chains. Greg, I, I don't know how Washington's gonna do, but you're already down Montez Sweat and Chase Young, and now you take two more out, and you're like, who are these guys? It's been impressive enough over the last four games that they've been able to win in the style they had, right? Keeping teams low scoring, managed to win the game at the end. And now today, they get a whole new wrinkle. The backups are now being replaced by further backups Quite a challenge today with Dallas coming to your place. Uh, first down, they got a quick throw, kicked in the air, incomplete. It went right through the hands of C.D. Lamb, who says, yeah, my bad. Second and ten. Landon Collins back in after missing last week with a foot injury. It's good news for Washington, number 26. Dak does a great job. He senses Landon Collins come off the slot on a pressure. You don't see Washington dial up a ton of pressure. But he saw it, got the ball quick to see Lamb, just went right through his hands. On the fake, Prescott, room to run, hits Lamb wide open, first down into Washington territory. Bootleg work to perfection, and Lamb moves the chains for Dallas. Dak checked into this play. He's going to get all the action going this way. Watch Washington go. They're going to Zeke. Now he has no one in his face. Ball gets easy completion out to the flat with CeeDee Lamb. He checked into that play. You saw him. He moved Amari Cooper, kept him in that wing. He saw the look he wanted on the play action boot. He got into it. Fake to Elliott. Prescott quick throw. Nearly intercepted. William Jackson probably should have had it. Boy, that was, actually, that was Fuller, not Jackson, 29. Little behind them, but Prescott got away with one. And we've seen this a little bit over the last five, six games. It just senses that they're not quite on the same page. You see Dak, he throws that ball inside, expecting his receiver Gallup to kind of come out of his break. If Washington wants to hang in here today. Those are the possessions they got to steal now. He's going to come up with that pick. 
Another fake. Prescott. Some pressure over the middle. Has a completion short of a first down. It's Amari Cooper. As the Coop chance. A lot of Dallas fans here today. It'll be a third and short. Mike McCarthy also back for the Cowboys. Remember, he missed last week's win over New Orleans. He was on the COVID list, had it. His whole family went through him. Luckily, they're all doing okay now. He just got back to the facility on Thursday and said, hey, we're going to win the game. <laughs> Uneventful week. He inserted himself right back into the conversation. Prescott floats it out. Elliott has it. Room to run for Ezekiel Elliott, who takes it down near the 20. Great play design. They know it's man, so they're going to cause a rub here, and they're going to get Zeke on the on the wheel. Watch. He's going to try to pop out and guard a man. Too much traffic. He's trying to work through not only his own players. He's working through Amari Cooper and the offensive players. Easy third down conversion. Great job by Dak recognizing man-to-man -man coverage. Tony Pollard is inactive today with that foot injury, the plantar fascia injury. So here's Corey Clement, who runs right into a brick wall. Ioannidis and Allen were there. So Pollard is a big injury and one you know all too well with a torn plantar fascia. Noah Brown put on the IR this week. He was saying he's hoping to play, but you know that's a tough injury to come back from. Yeah, I've done it twice now, and, and that's nothing to joke about. Plantar fasciitis in itself is a tough thing to deal with, right? It's nagging, but you can play with it. Once it tears, long term it's a better thing, but I'll tell you what, in the immediate moment, it feels like you step on a landmine. Prescott, time, can't find anyone. Looks to maybe run and then just runs out of room. Landon Collins was the closest defender. Good work in the secondary. And it'll bring up third down. Something to keep an eye on as this game unfolds. We've talked about the, the limited pass rush, the guys that they're missing, especially on the edge for Washington. So much of what you're able to call in the secondary, pass coverages, zones, is dependent upon getting pressure on the quarterback. All of a sudden, that pressure is not getting there. Dak has more time. Those zones become a little bit easier to pick apart. Something to keep an eye on as we look forward to the rest of this game. Third down. Gets it on the outside. Cooper makes a man miss and has a way to go and is not going to get there. He did a good job to get out of the first tackle, but he's still going to come up five yards short. And now a field goal try coming up. I think if you're Dallas, there's been a lot of pressure on your offense. Yes, you're the number one offense. But anyone who's looking, both within or outside the organization, realizes they're just a little off, right? The run game's pretty much been non-existent. Pass game at times. To take the opening drive down, come away with points, assuming he makes this, I think is a really good sign for this offense as they try to recapture that early rhythm they had early in the year. Here's Zerline from 35 yards out. And the kick is up and good. So the Cowboys on their opening possession get a field goal, jump out three zip. Off drink of the National Football League. So the Cowboys take the opening drive, go down the field, settle for a 35 yard field goal, and have a 3 0 lead. In some ways, Washington's defense might feel good about that stop. And Greg, you talked about, I mean, the way they have to play is the way they've won all these games in this four-game win streak, right? Play good defense, run the football, and hold on to the football to keep their D off the field. And that man, Tyler Heineke, has played great. Make that Taylor Heineke has played great during this stretch. So now it's Washington's turn. Carter will take a knee. Taking a look at Heineke's numbers during this four-game winning streak. I mean, he told us, hey, look, you just need the reps in the NFL to get better and feel more comfortable. Greg, I'd say that's getting better. I mean, those are terrific during this run that they're on. Yeah, and since the bye week, he's really captured what his identity as a player. Earlier in the year, he even admitted as much to us. He wants to be that gunslinger, run around, take some chances, but it was leading to a lot of turnovers. It was leading, of course, to ultimately to some losses. He's found that balance now as a quarterback, as a player in this league, and since the bye, he's been fantastic. Looking to throw, pressure in his face, Rose complete. 
And a first down. It is caught by Adam Humphreys at a good start for Heineke as he got by Anthony Brown. You see Humphrey here. It's just straight man. They bring five man pressure up front, hoping to get there. Humphrey does a great job coming in and out of that break on Brown. Brown's playing for that crossing route, puts his left foot in the ground, snaps across his face. Heineke just got that ball off. Something we've got to keep in mind now. They've got some dudes now up front rushing the passer. He's got to get that ball out. Here is Gibson, fifth in the NFL in rushing, gets around the edge, and then he's taken down there across the 40 after a gain of a couple by Van Der Esch. For this Washington offense, Tyler Larson is back at center. He was center three of four for them on the year, had an MCL sprain back in there. The line has played well, and uh, Gibson, no McKissick today, so guess what? He might get the ball even more. His volume has been high the last four or five weeks or so. Can't imagine that changing. They're, if they're going to have success today, he's going to get primarily all the touches in the backfield. But they think he has the physical capabilities to handle it. Another fake. Heineke, near side, incomplete. Tried to get it to Curtis Samuel, who was open. And they've had a hard time integrating him in the offense as he came back from that groin injury. Well, Dallas defensively getting back some help today. Demarcus Lawrence came back last week. Randy Gregory back today. They'll also get Neville Gallimore, who was a starter last year back in Hill play. Parsons All-World, maybe the defensive player of the year. And then the secondary, you'll see those names. Diggs, who leads the NFL in interceptions. His defense doesn't lack star power. <laughs> Guys they've had coming back from injury. And we get a whistle. Allen Kemp, our referee, Alex Kemp. I'll start offense number 72. Five guard penalty, third down. It's on Charles Leno. And it'll move it on back. Well, you talked about the star power of Dallas defensively. It's going to be interesting today with Gregory coming back. He and Lawrence playing together today for the first time really all year since week one. And seeing how Dan Quinn puts these rush packages together, especially here at third and long. If you're Washington, you have to be really careful. Line holding up. Heineke going deep. His receiver fell, and Anthony Brown dropped it. Diami Brown fell down, and then Brown had an easy pick and couldn't haul it in. All being said, it's a punt coming up. You see Brown on the outside. He tries to get him with a chatter go, and he just chattered himself right up to the ground. They're trying to get that double move. They only rushed four. They max protected, so he had plenty of time there to hold up. Tried to take a chance. We've seen so often in this league. You throw the ball deep, you get PIs, maybe you come down with the catch. As you said, Yami Brown tried to come out of his chatter and just got out over his skis. Tress Way to put it away. Some pressure on him, and he goes down, and a penalty flag as well. As Wilson way back to receive it, looking for a seam, cutting across the field. That's a disaster. Going nowhere. David Mayo was there on the tackle. Well, we see what the penalty flag is way back at the 34-yard line. Offside. Defense number 32 was lined up in the neutral zone. That penalty is declined. First down, Dallas. Timeout. And so the Cowboys will start just outside of their own end zone. Opening drive was a field goal for them. What does Dak Prescott have in store? This next timeout, 7 and 1 in his career against Washington in an early lead. Back after this. So the Cowboys with a 3-0 lead here over Washington, backed up on their own five-yard line. And things have been good when they've scored first 6-0 on the year. They bring on seven offensive linemen for this set. It's a double jumbo. And Connor Williams, who's a guard, is lined up as the fullback, as Greg just showed you. There he is. And 
And they will run it to Elliott, trying to get that run game going. And Elliott forces his way out to the nine. He has had a knee injury really all year. And people keep saying, why is he playing? Why is he playing? So I'll ask you, why is he playing? He's clearly, he's clearly banged up. There are certain guys in the NFL, whether people like to admit it or not, who have earned the right to play through injury. Even if oftentimes the backup may be able to do their job slightly better while the starter is injured, guys like Zeke Elliott, they, his place on this team, his, the way his teammates and everyone rely on him, if he can play, he's going to be in the line. Quick hitter over the middle. Lamb's got a first down. Quick passing game working for Dallas early as C.D. Lamb has his second catch this afternoon. Well, you look at Elliott, right? And, and you go back earlier in the year, he had back-to-back 100-yard -back games, and, and, and you see, th there they were, 143 against Carolina, 110 against the Giants. He got hurt in that Carolina game, and, and since then, well, there's been a big decline. And look, it's not all him. There's always blocking issues, right? But you see the yards per carry. His 51-yard game is the highest. Prescott falls down. Ball is loose and recovered by Dallas and Elliott, who fell on it. Got a nice little bounce there as Prescott lost his footing. And that's why I continue to say how important it is, especially when you have a team as talented at the skill positions as Dallas, with those three receivers, Gallup, CeeDee Lamb, Mari Cooper. Instead of just continuing to hand it off and hand it off and say, eventually we're going to break through, spread them out. We've seen it a little bit early here. Quick game. Get the ball out of your hand. All of a sudden, that box lightens up a little bit, and the run game starts to pop. Second down. Prescott airs it out. Cut! Intercepted. It was to nowhere, and Landon Collins has the pick. Dak Prescott just didn't see him. You're going to see C.D. Lamb's going to run across the field. He's kind of stationary. He's got plenty of time. The pocket is clean. The offensive line does a nice job. He comes to him late. He's trying to elevate. This underneath defender's job, as they call it, elevate the ball. Make the quarterback throw it over your head. Dak just elevates it too much. Landon Collins gets as easy an interception as he's ever going to have. That's just a ball that Dak just, just not a great ball. There's nothing really else to it. His first interception of the Ready? year. Is Washington good field position. Gibson runs into a wall. Van Der Esch is there, maybe a half a yard, and that's about it. And so now Antonio Gibson, who comes in today, fifth in the NFL in rushing. He has been a real bull the last couple weeks. Had a career-high game two weeks ago, and then against Las Vegas last week, 88 more yards rushing, 23 yards receiving, five catches, a touchdown. He is... Been a big part of this offense. Number 24 right there. Officially no game. Heineke underneath incomplete. Ricky Seals Jones, the intended receiver. And it'll bring up another third and long. Looked like that ball might have been tipped. Kind of came out of his hand funny, but I think one of the defensive linemen of Dallas got their hands on it. See Antonio Gibson's numbers since week 10. Only Jonathan Taylor of the Colts, who leads the league in rushing, has been better. It's pretty good company to find yourself in. Sure is. So after the turnover, a third down and 10. Got to get to the 27. Blitz is coming. They see it. Knocked away. Oh, Gregory, what a play. He tipped it. He intercepted it. Missed the last month with a calf injury. He anticipated it. He tipped it. He picked it off. And the Cowboys have it. Play by Randy Gregory. His first career interception. He tipped it to himself and then was able to pick it off. And now after Dallas turned it over, they get it right back and they will run it. Try to get that ground game going. Back to the interception, Greg. He may have saved a touchdown, as you showed us during the break. It's actually a great play call. They're in zero. It's man, man, man. They're trying to cut Randy Gregory to get this ball into the perimeter. He just, he's such a great athlete. Not only does he get his hands up to tip it, he comes down with the pick. 
Randy Gregory, sometimes you just got a really good player on the field who makes a great play. Because for Washington, that could be a touchdown. Movement, low snap, penalty flag. Prescott throws, it is caught in traffic by Gallup. Looked like Prescott had a free play. Gallup hooks him up, and the Cowboys have a first down. A great job by Dak. It was a free play. His center, Tyler Biotis, tried to quick snap and kind of lost the handle. He saw the ball roll back. Offside, defense number 98. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is a first down. You're going to see the offensive line. No one really gets out of their stance. The defensive line stops rushing, which is just a huge mistake. They got to go and put pressure. He keeps his cool. Turns into a scramble drill. Teams have set free play routes. They're on the same page, got a big chunk play. From the 12, Elliott cuts back inside the 10. And a solid run by Elliott is going to pick up nearly five yards. So check this out. This ball actually got tipped twice. A guy I played with that looks eerily similar to that Hall of Famer, so it's big comparison. Julius Peppers used to not be able to throw screens at him in practice or a game because you couldn't complete it or he was going to pick it. A little fake to Lamb. Now it's bobbled, and that's just an incomplete pass. It's a forward pass, even though Washington thinks they have it. So they had a fake to Lamb, tried to get Elliott a little trickery, and it brings up a third down and five. A little fake toss shovel here. See, just can't Illegal quite formation. handle it. Offense number 77 was not on the line of scrimmage. Five yard penalty, second down. That's Tyron Smith. And now Zach Martin, their four time All Pro right guard, is slow to get up. And Connor Williams looks like he's going to come in for Martin. And now, real concern. Best player on that line. Maybe the best player on their team. He's that good. NFL Saturday, December 18th, only on NFL Network. Well, Zach Martin did kind of jog off under his own power, so hopefully he's okay. Meanwhile, Connor Williams, number 52, subs for him. He started most of the year on the left side. He's in the left side. McGovern moves over to the right guard now. Here's Prescott, second and ten. Floating one corner of the end zone. Incomplete. Elliott couldn't really ever track it. Holcomb had pretty good coverage, and now a third and ten. We saw they had luck throwing Zeke Elliott that wheel route earlier in the game. This time Cole Holcomb, we saw him last week firsthand in Vegas against the Raiders. He made a few nice downfield coverage peak yeah. stuff. It's not really an element of his game he's known for, but the last few weeks he's starting to show up. Good example there on Zeke. Zach Martin's back in the game at right guard. Third and ten. Flag flies. Prescott underneath. Cooper has a catch. Makes a move. Tackled inside the five. Going to be a little short of a first down, but let's see what the penalty is. Offside. Defense number 93 was lined up in the neutral zone. A five-yard penalty. Third down. Well, that's just a critical mistake. You get a nice stop, potentially could force a field goal, and they give him another attempt at third down just because you can't line up behind the line of scrimmage. And so they'll take that penalty, not the play, make it a third and five. Prescott has time over the middle, caught for the touchdown, Amari Cooper. Penalty flag on this play, too. Back near the quarterback. Looks like it will stand. Let's see. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense number 98. The touchdown is good. The penalty will be enforced on the extra point. Really nice play designed by Kellen Moore. I think there was a little bit of a bust there in the secondary. You're going to see the roughing here. 
Yeah, it's just, I guess, the little shove. I don't know. By the letter of the law, I guess that's a penalty, but. Well, what it does, Greg, is they have the option, remember, to take it and move it on the try after closer. So they've done that, and they're going to go for two. They might have to take a timeout. They don't have the right personnel on the field. Uh, Washington was not ready for this. They rush people out of the field. And they're going to try and sneak it in there. Second surge. No signal yet at all. I haven't seen a signal either way. There it is. He's in. Two-point conversion. Really smart by Mike McCarthy. Really smart. Take that opportunity to chase the two following the penalty. Really, really good aggressive play call there by Mike McCarthy. I love it. Let's see it's the touchdown before. Watch Cooper. He's going to kind of get lost. They clear it out with Schultz. This guy's got a match and carry. He doesn't. Bang, window right open. Just we're talking about Cole Holcomb there. It looked like there was a little bit of a miscommunication underneath for someone has to carry, and then someone has to widen on the corner route by Dalton Schultz. And as we said, they went jumbo. Connor Williams played a little bit of guard, a little bit of fullback. They bring him in there for the two-point play. They say Zeke just gets in. Let's see if he did. See him turning his legs. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. He's, he's clearly. He's obviously in. They just didn't make it. took a while to make the call. He was it's a lot of big in. bodies in there. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Uh, you know, you look at how this game has started. So the unbelievable interception by Randy Gregory after Dallas had turned it over. The interception to Collins. Cowboys go down. Four plays. Score it to Cooper. And just like that, up 11-0 in this first quarter. Here's DeAndre Carter looking to make something happen. And gets out across the 25. Tripped up. At the 27. And another penalty flag. There's been a lot of flags in the early going in this game. And now multiple other flags fly as well. And so they decipher these penalties and figure out what the call is going to be. Hey, Greg, one thing about Washington is we know, we talked about in the open how they've won these games, right? They've possessed the ball, they've run the ball, played great defense. At least in what we've seen of late, they're not made to overcome big deficits. So this is a fascinating early part of the game. During the return, personal foul, face mask, kicking team. After the play was over, taunting, receiving team number 80. The penalties offset, the first down for Washington. All right, so a lot of talking for nothing, essentially. We've got our first game break of the afternoon. Let's say hello to Carissa Thompson. Hopefully that's not what you say about me, Kevin. Chiefs up 7-0 versus the Raider. Patrick Mahomes finds Daryl Williams out of the backfield for this 23-yard score. Chiefs up 14-0. Kevin? Carissa, never. By the way, we, we you know, everyone kind of fell asleep on the Chiefs, and they've won five in a row and are right in the mix for the number one seed. Just throwing that out there. Great teams always find a way to catch their rhythm when it matters. And another whistle. Goodness, hard to get any flow to this game. There's a whistle every 10 seconds. And let's sort it all out. But great, you saw the note we just put up there. It's the largest deficit for Washington since the Green Bay game. Curious to see how they respond here. This has not been their M.O. And Scott Turner, the Washington offensive coordinator, he said as much. He said, our biggest advantage in this four-game win streak has been we've been playing with the lead almost the entire game but here they find themselves down early does he change his play call does he panic early i don't think he is i've been around scotty i think he's going to stay true to what he knows their identity is they're going to have to keep this thing close to stay committed to this philosophy here is gibson looking for a seam and there's not much of one maybe a yard if he's lucky Adding to that is this, no J.D. McKissick for the second week in a row with a concussion. And we saw in the game we did last week, Logan Thomas, unfortunately, an injury is out for the year. They wouldn't have won that game without Logan Thomas last week. He's a huge loss. I know they haven't had McKissick for a couple weeks, and he brings kind of a unique element to the backfield. But Logan Thomas, I mean, he really has become a top-level tight end across the league. He's coached by my former tight end coach, who's, if you need a backup to get ready to play, Ricky Seals-Jones, John Bates, they're being coached by arguably the best tight end coach in the league. Second down. Heineke looking. Can't find anyone. Looks to take off and run. He can do that and does. And then dives forward across the 30 to the 31. And so he's got a four-yard gain. 
This is something Washington wants to see more from Taylor Heineke. They say when things aren't looking great and the rush lanes break down, you're a great athlete. Go create, go be a runner. And I think it's something he's still trying to find the balance between staying alive as a passer, but also using his legs to kind of take off like he did there. Well, so far, 0 for 2 on third down. They've both been third and longs. This is a third down and six. Blitz is coming. Heineke in trouble. Gets hit. Throws deep. Humphreys over the shoulder. Did he haul it in? And there's a penalty flag as well. It looks like he made the catch. And I think on top of the catch, I think they're going to get Malik Hooker for either a personal foul, late hit out of bounds, or... Wow. Look at this catch. First of all, look at the throw. He puts it right over his outside shoulder. Left foot down. It's hard to tell. After the play was over. Personal foul. Defense number 28. 15 yard penalty. I'll be right with you. Thank you. First foul. Great job there by Heineke. He knows he's going to take a hit. He hangs in there, he steps up, delivers a perfect ball right to the outside shoulder of the receiver. Couldn't tell if he got that second foot in bounds. Why is Washington moving backwards right now? I'm so confused. I think they ruled it incomplete. They had to. And the penalty personal foul was the yards guy. Yeah. No one made a signal on the sideline because of the penalty. That's it. But I think they're going to rule that Humphrey's second foot was out of bounds. So after all that, an incomplete pass, a 15-yard penalty, and it is a first down. Remember, that was a third down conversion. So here's Gibson on the left side, and another short game. I'm still wondering if he caught the ball. <laughs> Got a lot going on here. I mean, there's a lot going on. I was still trying to see if he caught the ball. There was really never a definitive signal. I'm just surprised on that play there was no penalty. Baby steps, Greg. Let's see if he actually caught it. Let's see, one, no. It's clearly out, out of bounds. That's a great angle. All right, so we squared that away. We're making progress. <laughs> they motion Gibson out as a wideout. Another blitz is coming. Heineke over the middle, knocked away. Diggs all over Terry McLaurin. The league leader in interceptions is Diggs with nine on the year. Great coverage. Another third and long coming up. What Scott Turner tell us? He said, you know, we can throw at him. You know, we're not going to necessarily take the guy he's guarding off, you know, out of the progression. But he said, we have to be careful how we throw at him. He said, traditionally, those 50-50 balls, those contested balls downfield, we think are in the advantage of the offense. With Diggs, if that ball's close down the field, it's a pick. Another third and long. Heineke stands in, deals. Humphreys is short. Great tackle was made by Malik Hooker. And now you wonder if Ron Rivera thinks about going for it. It's going to be about a fourth and three, it looks like. Looks like he's keeping his offense on the field, which I really like. I think they're going to have to maintain possession, steal a few more possessions, keep Dallas off the field. Find yourself on their side of midfield, fourth and two. I really, I think this is the right call. Empty backfield, pressure, Heineke is decked. Down he goes, the ball is loose. It's picked up by Dallas and Armstrong. He's got a convoy, he's going to walk. Parsons with the sack forced to fumble and Dorrance Armstrong a defensive touchdown in back-to-back -back weeks for Dallas Is there a better defensive player in the NFL? I don't care that he's a rookie Is there a better defensive player this year than Micah Parsons? Unbelievable Well clearly a sack let's make sure this was a fumble Yeah, 
Yeah, I think that ball's loose before Heineke hits the ground. Wow. Every game, the impact Micah Parsons can make. It, you know, we throw the word special, unique. A lot of those words are thrown around. I'm not sure there's a guy in the league that really has an impact the way he can do in so many different ways. The guy's incredible. Micah Parsons, his 11th sack of the year, his third forced fumble of the year. He has really done it all. And you see the ball was loose really right at the head. And then he clearly lost it before he got down. And then Armstrong, right man, right place, ran it in from 37 yards out. He said, hey, DeMarcus, block him, but he didn't have to do anything. It was an easy one. And the first touchdown ever for Armstrong. Carlos Watkins had an interception touchdown last year. These D linemen are scoring at will. What a start for Dallas. Zerline on for the extra points. Up, and Zerline will put it through. What a start. 18 to nothing. And Micah Parsons is insane, Greg. We talked about the way he can impact the game. He's playing a traditional linebacker run game. He's just so fast to pull the trigger, the offensive line. We saw it a couple weeks ago against the Saints. They use him as a spy. Watch how fast he closes that ground. Hill's got nowhere to go. Now, he plays off the ball. We see him on the ball. But watch him in pass coverage. This is a slot receiver trying to get him on a little whirly bird up the sideline. He carries it, leads to the curse, interception, and then again, as an edge rusher, watch how fast he closes this ground. I mean, Taysom Hill, again, he's fast. That guy can run, he can get on the edge. Then you see him here today. Beat Brandon Sheriff, the all-pro right guard, just gets on that edge, finishes it through the ball. And you see it on the ball as a rusher, there as an interior rusher, pass coverage. He's truly, truly a remarkable player, and, and again, is there anyone else in the league, KB, who's asked to do the amount of different things they ask him to do and do them all at an all-pro level? It's really amazing. I mean, now it's six straight games with a sack for Parsons. Javon Kurse had eight straight in 99 for Tennessee. I mean, the rookie sack record, by the way, is by Javon Kurse, 14 and a half that same year for the Titans. Now 11 for Parsons. And now it is Carter who will let go over his head. Let's go down to Pam Oliver. Yeah, Kevin, Taylor Heineke, he came off the field after that sack, and all the medical staff sort of stood around him. He tried to walk it off, but right now he is in the medical tent. As soon as we know more, we will get it to you. Oh, boy, when it rains or pours if you're Washington, game couldn't have gotten off to a worse start. Down 18 nothing, and now your quarterback is hurt. Here's Kyle Allen. Who certainly has played before 12 starts for Carolina in 2019. He had four starts last year before he had a gruesome ankle injury and that really allowed Heineke to come in and play later. There's Heineke out of the tent. We'll see if he comes back in right now. It's Kyle Allen and it's 18 nothing Cowboys. Allen on the run can take it and run a lot of room and he'll do just that first down easily for Kyle Allen. They weren't expecting that. And that'll move the chains as Heineke lurking and he's coming back in. Well Allen's saying wait a second I came in one play and I got a first down. Yeah. I'll tell you a lot of the characteristics that they use to describe Taylor Heineke 2019 my last year in Carolina Kyle Allen took over for Cam Newton he got injured earlier in the year. Kyle has a lot of those similar characteristics he's got kind of a, a cockiness a confidence to him. Very similar two guys. You know who else has confidence? Dallas' defense. <laughs> they are on a roll of late. Defensive touchdown by Armstrong and an 18 0 lead after one. What if smart? Scan the QR code now. Enter your picks in the NFL Sunday Challenge for a chance at the jackpot. Free to play. Download the Super 6 app right now and so we start the second quarter back from Landover Maryland an 18 nothing Cowboys lead they've done a lot well they've gotten a couple turnovers one of them they turned into a touchdown Micah Parsons strip sack Dorrance Armstrong ran in the fumble for a touchdown that's the story so far Curtis Samuel in the backfield for the first time here is Gibson and they've yet to get the run game or really much of anything on offense going 
So for Washington during this four-game winning streak, I mean, they beat some good teams. They took down the Super Bowl chance. It's been David versus Goliath, right? The slingshot. Coach Rivera has them throwing rocks in the locker room, which you know well, right? They take down Russell Wilson and Cam Newton. Then they go to Vegas and take them down in a last-second victory. Well, down 18-0 against the first-place Cowboys. I hope they got a big rock. Yeah, <laughs> this is not exactly the manner in which they've been able to win those games we just saw in the graphic, but they can't lose their minds. They've got to find something they can hang their hat on here. Second down, he's got time, can't find anyone. Heineke tucks, slips away, still looking across his body, and that was almost a disaster. Brown, who had a chance at an interception earlier, had another opportunity, couldn't hold on, and it's a third and long again. Yeah, that's the that's the balance, the playmaker balance with the let's make better decisions. There's nowhere to go early. Now he turns into the gunslinger kind of run around. Fine. But sometimes you got to know where the play ends, right? Know when to live to play another day. Either run it and get down or throw that ball into the bleachers. I know you find yourself down early. I know you're trying to make a play, but you're not going to be able to make up the entire deficit on one play. been third and long all day. Parsons coming again, and he got him again! Micah Parsons is unblockable! Dan Quinn, he alluded to this setup here. They're gonna line up five guys on the line. One, two, three, four, five. And then Parson is the sixth. That forces the one-on-one -on -one matchup with Antonio Gibson. The five linemen have to block the five bigs. And that leaves a back, and Micah Parsons, Dallas will take that matchup all day. He's incredible. Two more sacks today, a forced fumble, he's everywhere. And this Dallas defense has come to play. Tress way to punt it away. Good punt, Lamb retreating to the 15. Looking for blocks. Not a lot of room and good coverage too. Way with an exceptional punt. Coverage teams were down there in a hurry. 57-yard punt. Micah Parsons is the man. Two sacks today. Cowboys a big early. Theory, who leads the league in interceptions? It's Micah Parsons' world. We're just living in it. I mean, he is just all world. Two more sacks today, one which led directly to a touchdown, and now the Cowboys back on offense, up 18 early. Prescott on the roll, throws into trouble. That's the second questionable throw he's made today. First one was picked off earlier, that time just incomplete as Gallup, the intended receiver. You said it, and we've talked about it a few times. They're just out of sorts, but if you're going to find a game to get your rhythm back, get your timing, when your defense creates turnovers, your defense leads to a defensive touchdown, these are the games now where Dak can take a deep breath, you've got a big lead, and just use this game to find their rhythm, work on some things that have been their struggle. Here's Clement who gets the carry. And again, playing with Pollard out today with a foot injury. Let's get another game break from Carissa Thompson. Thank you so much, Kevin. Brown's up 10-0 against the Ravens. Baker Mayfield finds Austin Hooper for this one-yard score. Browns extend their lead to 17, but more importantly, the Ravens' Lamar Jackson was carted off with an ankle injury. Kevin? Oh, man. That's not good news. Hopefully he's okay. Ravens right now the three-seed in the AFC. Third down and six. Washington D needs a stop. Prescott, pressure, sees it, throws it as a man. Wide open in his gallop. Caught for a big gainer and a first down. And a penalty as well, back by the quarterback. He beat Fuller for 44 yards, but now let's see what the penalty is. Holding, offense number 71. 10 yard penalty, third down. That's on Lael Collins, a right tackle who knew Gates a big gain. You're going to see the hold right here. Look at his right arm. It's kind of wrapped across his chest. And kind of brings him to the ground. Anytime that, that official who's standing behind, kind of looking right at that, when he sees that arm outside the body and the defender just be pulled, you know, sometimes they slip, sometimes it's just by choice, but they're going to throw that flag every time, especially out there on the, on the open side. Well, that Sting, set of a 44-yard pickup, make it a third and 16. 
Kellen Moore running this Cowboys offense. Three of four on third down so far today. Try to set up a screen to Lamb on the far side of the field, and that's not going to go anywhere. And so Washington defense gets a help with a penalty. They'll force a punt. And it's going to be minor victories. If you're Washington and you're on the sideline, there's a long way to go, but it's going to take just little wins, right? Get off the field on third down. Check the box. Now, you're going to get decent field position, depending on the punt here. Get the ball around midfield and go try to get some points on the board. It's going to take little chipping away, chipping away if they want to find themselves at all in this game come the second half. Here's the punt. Carter calls fair catch and makes it right around the 41 yard line. So, Mike McCarthy and the Cowboys. McCarthy back on the sideline, guaranteed a win. Looking pretty solid so far. 18 0 in the second. Is nine and a half sacks in six games good? I, I would say yes. That's what Parsons has done. He's got two sacks today. One of them a forced fumble that Dorrance Armstrong picked up and ran 37 yards for a touchdown. Ready? Cowboys have five defensive touchdowns on Ready? the year. And Washington needs something. Heineke pressured again, gets decked again, and that is incomplete. And Parsons is everywhere, Greg, literally everywhere on the field. What makes him so difficult to plan for is unlike a traditional D end who might line up, he really can line up anywhere. You're gonna see now they're gonna take the, the tight end and give him a little soft chip to give their right tackle some help. But now he's gonna rush the passer. He's gonna start off the ball. He's gonna walk into his front. See the pressure he put on. That was That's what led to the Armstrong touchdown. And then again, they build their pressures with him off the ball, on the edge, both sides. So if you're the offensive coordinator, you can't always say we're going to slide to him. We're going to build the protection around that because you don't know where he is. Gibson with a short carry. And it's very interesting talking to Dan Quinn. And, and you know, he was rubbing his hands together, uh, you know, talking. He said, Oh, can't wait. I got all three guys with Gregory and Ware and Parsons together. I thought you brought up a great point. They used him earlier how they needed him with all the injuries. Now it's they could use him however they want. Absolutely. Earlier in the year, due to the injuries of Lawrence and and Gregory, they needed him as an edge player, especially in third down, to rush the passer. Now with those guys back, Dan Quinn can say, where do I want to play Parsons? Not necessarily where do I need him. Heineke, quick throw, incomplete, not even close. As Adam Humphreys, the intended receiver, Lewis on the coverage, but that one had no chance. And Washington's offense sputtering, to say the least, today. At some point, someone's going to have to win. They're going to keep bringing these five and six man pressures. Heineke's feeling he's got to get the ball out of his hand. We've seen multiple times now Dallas just challenge their receivers, get up in their face and play man. Someone on that Washington offense needs to win and create a spark. Because right now, Dallas has them on their heels. I mean, Heineke is two of 10 for 19 yards in this game. That's going to bounce into the end zone. Diggs let it go. And now Dallas will start on their own 20. Micah Parsons, you, you know, going to show you Lawrence Taylor. And, and the reason we show you this 81 season for the Hall of Famer, drafted second overall. Sacks at this year weren't even an official stat. So this is going back and looking at the annals, nine and a half sacks. We'll get back to LT and Parsons when we come back. There's a reason we're showing it to you. Welcome to all sponsor of the NFL. We know we're doing NFC East, but you're wondering why we're showing you Lawrence Taylor. The reason is he's the only rookie to ever win Defensive Player of the Year. Micah Parsons has a real chance to do just that. I mean, he has been arguably the best defensive player in the league this year. Two more sacks today. That's why the Cowboys are up 18 to nothing as they try to get the ground game going with Clement. And there's not much there. And for Washington, Greg, I mean, they. They just haven't done anything remotely positive on offense, and now this is a concern. He went into the tent earlier, Heineke, and now you know, there's an elbow or arm issue going on there. But they need something positive, I know that. Clemens stays in the game at running back, giving Elliott a break. Prescott. Throws far side of the field. It is caught there by Lamb, and he's tackled immediately by Fuller. So it'll be a third and long. Another one of those soft zones. That's really what's been 
the difference with this defense, keeping the ball in front of them, rally tackle, tackle in space, limit the big plays. Earlier in the year, saw a lot of explosives. This has been kind of philosophical change. Jack Del Rio, Ron Rivera. And now you can see they got guys lined up in the front here. This kind of double A gap. They could bring everyone. Those guys could drop into their zones, try to cloud the picture. Get it out quickly to Lamb, who breaks the tackle. C.D. Lamb surging forward, and he's got the first down. C.D. Lamb, what an effort. 12 yards to move the chains. Yeah, we just said it. Open field tackling is the only way you can run this kind of zone drop defense. Once the ball's completed short of the sticks, you got to bring them down. You see a lot of guys not breaking down. You see McCain, you see Landon Collins. They brought a little pressure. They, they did what they call a zone droppers, where those guys that start up, they drop into coverage. Short completion. You got to make the open field tackle and get off the field. There's Clement who's got the ball, and again, subbing for Pollard. Gets a couple yards. You talked about the blitz against Prescott there. It's interesting, Greg. Teams have stopped doing it against Dallas because he annihilated the blitz early in the year. 16 touchdown passes. As now Lyle Collins is slow to get up the right tackle for Dallas. Right, so teams, because of that, stopped doing it. The Denver game, Denver didn't blitz at all. They had success, and really teams went away from it. But Washington down, you know, their team that blitzes a lot. Trying to make something happen. You see the difference in how teams have approached Dallas. Dak even admitted to us, hey, teams have not done it anymore. He's like, but if they do it, I welcome it. The reason is when you're a smart quarterback, when you understand the game and you can process the entire field very quickly like Dak Prescott does, the blitz, in essence, makes your decision for you. You know, built into some of these concepts, if pressure comes one way or another, if it's a secondary or a linebacker pressure, that, in essence, makes the mind up for me. That's where I'm going with the ball. All of a sudden, as you saw there, they bluff the pressure, and then it's when those guys drop, especially when they play zone. Now the pressure on the quarterback is to find the open zones quickly. Now the difference, you brought up Denver. Denver generated a ton of pressure, and they were able to get to the quarterback with four. We've seen that to be the recipe. Can Washington do that with this really beat up defensive front? Well, that's the problem. Their two starters sweat. And Young have been out. Young's out for the year. And then they go down to Hill and Smith Williams on the COVID list. So they are really banged up on the line. Here's Prescott on second down. Has time. Can't find anyone. Takes off and is going to run and just slide down. Hasn't really run that much since coming back from the calf injury. And it'll just set it up for a third down. He spoke about that calf injury for Prescott. He heard it the last game against New England. Before that, I mean, he was just on fire. Look at the rating, 115. That's fantastic. A 5-1 record, 16-4. Since it hasn't been quite the same, don't know if that's the reason, but he did say, yeah, we're a little off. We're a little out of sync on offense. Terrence Seal, by the way, in a right tackle. Prescott loading up, going deep, incomplete. There's a flag. William Jackson on the coverage, Gallup the intended receiver. Looked to me like pretty good coverage by Jackson. He's stride and stride, there's a little pull in, a little hand fighting. You see him grab his right arm. That's I don't know. Defense number 23, Ball's placing spot on foul. First down, down. I just don't love it. I mean, I'm an offensive guy. Trust me, if I was on that field, I'd be yelling and screaming for a P.I. I get it. But I just feel like that's really good coverage. You're stride for stride with the guy. You find the ball. You can see him look back. Yeah, he tugs his arm. That's hand funny. That's going on on every single route in the NFL all day. And so it gives the Cowboys a big first down. 29-yard penalty. Here is Elliott. Off to the guard. Big hole for Zeke inside the 30. And down to the 29. So Elliott getting a little traction here. Pam, how's he doing with that knee injury? As I say that, he kind of limps off. 
Hey there, Kevin. I did speak to Elliot before the game. He told me he feels really good, probably the best he's felt in the couple of months since he injured the knee. His position coach, Skip Pete, told me before the game, with that willful attitude of his, that guy's just hard to take out of a ball game. Nice. He's tough, there's no question about it. So Clement in the game now. Good cut by Corey Clement. And a nice job behind Connor Williams playing the fullback. Pam, go ahead. And something interesting from Dak Prescott, he told us everyone around Elliott, from play callers to the coaching staff, they have to be better to make sure that they're being smart about how much the running back is being used. Kevin. Yeah, and, and I, you know, combining what Pam's saying with what you're saying, he's earned the right to play through it. He's also excellent in blitz pickup and pass protection, isn't he? There's so much more to playing running back, especially if you're a guy like Zeke Elliott. You have such a presence in that locker room. There's so much more to your involvement and importance than when you just have the ball. Here's Clement, who a little jump cut for him. Get an extended time. You know, it's interesting for Clement. He was a Super Bowl hero for the Eagles. 2017, he had 100 yards receiving and a touchdown in that Super Bowl. But since 2018, He's had 125 total scrimmage yards, so he just he's kind of fallen off the face of the earth, but getting some reps here today, six carries, 14 yards as Elliott's back in. There's Clement with Pollard out. Bigger roll today. Second down and six. Prescott hit as he throws, incomplete. Had a little traffic in front of him and tried to get it to Lamb, but not really there as Fuller on the coverage. Third down. Nice job. We just talked about do they have to find a way to generate some pressure. You saw they just added an extra rusher off the left edge. Dallas did a nice job picking it up, but what it does is it forces now everybody up front to be in a one-on-one -on -one block. All it takes is one defensive lineman to win his matchup. You saw that Jonathan Allen inside kind of got that little hit on Dak. Causes the ball to float and forces a big third down. Prescott, pressure coming from Allen, tipped in the air and incomplete. That hung up there for a while and it just falls to the ground. It'll bring up fourth down and a field goal try. Interesting play design. They're trying to do an inside screen. You're going to see the offensive lineman release. Jamin Davis pops out. He reads it. He should have picked it. See, it's a little cloudy. He doesn't see Jamin Davis who popped out. Interesting play design. Once a screen gets off rhythm and the timing is thrown out, you got to just dirt it. You got to just throw it at their feet. The longer a quarterback holds a screen, typically bad things happen. Here's their line to make it 21-0 from 38 yards out. It is up and right down the middle. So the Cowboys add some more points, make it 21-0 here in the second quarter. Today, business is a balance. 21-0, Cowboys in front of Washington. 4.58 to go in this first half. Cowboys defense has been superb here today. They've scored a touchdown, and that is some Christmas decorating. That's impressive. That's unbelievable. What kind of hooks do you use on that? The standard? I couldn't or? grow a beard like that if I had 10 years. Taylor Heineke is 2 of 10. Remember, he completed his first pass of the game for 14 yards, so he's one of his last nine for five yards. There's exactly one receiver for Washington who's caught a ball today. It's Adam Humphreys. And that man has two sacks, a forced fumble, and it's 21 to nothing. Cowboys got a big pass interference call, got a field goal out of it. That last drive, that's where we're at. A lot of time left in this first half. See if Washington could get anything going. Carter's going to take it out after a bobble and try to make something happen. Can't say I blame him there, but he's upended before the 20. As we remind you that Wednesday, the moment you've been waiting for is finally here. As all are unmasked on the Mass Singer finale, the biggest battle of the season. Who's going to win it all? The Mass Singer season finale, Wednesday on Fox. Greg Olson, I ask you. How does Washington do anything on offense? Like, what is the plan right now if you're Scott Turner? I think they need to find a way to somehow they need to win first down. So many people talk about third down conversions, and right now they haven't gotten any. But so much of that is they've gained no yards on first down, and then they find themselves on third and a mile. 
keeper. Heineke, there's nobody open. He's going to tuck it in and run, and that'll work. He'll take it. And going to mark him out at the 25-yard line. So he'll pick up six yards on the run, at least some positive yards as you're talking about there. And I know it's not really what they do. It's not their true identity. I wouldn't, I wouldn't hate them to go a little up-tempo, develop some sort of rhythm. When you keep going three and out, turnovers, three and out, three, you have no rhythm. You haven't had enough plays to get your offense settled into the game. Sometimes just changing that tempo, getting up to the line, snapping it, simplify Dallas a little bit, see if you can find a little offensive groove. Gibson's been quiet today, as has the entire offense, but close to a first down. Looks like he's got it. And that'll move the chains. All three timeouts, four minutes to go. And now Leno is slow to get up. Left tackle. That doesn't look particularly great. This Washington now. offensive line has just dealt with kind of musical chairs all year. Yeah, it's been a constant theme. Lemo, Leno has been the one guy who's been consistent out there in terms of playing. So has, you know, Flowers. But now he is hurt. So Sadiq Charles, who made a start at tackle on the right side early in the year, will come in on the left side. And we talked about it. Washington's used four centers this year. I mean, it's, and they've held up relatively well. But today, it's been tough sledding. Eight different starting combinations. It's tied for the most in the NFL. And musical chairs here so far this afternoon. Just 47 total yards on offense so far for Washington. Gibson. Nothing there. Odigizua for no gain. And Neville Gallimore was there as well. One of those guys Cowboys are happy to have back. He had a dislocated elbow. You see that big brace. He's been out all year. Look at this front. You got Micah Parsons, Marcus Lawrence, Gallimore, Odigi Zoo. I mean, you go right down the line. When they play that five down guys, right? You have two edge guys and then three interior. You can go up and down that line. You can point out guys that play at a high level. Having Gallimore back is a huge piece for them this rest of the season. Heineke, been under duress all day. Finally, as a completion, of Bates the tight end. Has a first down, and there's a penalty that flies from the secondary as well. There's the rookie, John Bates. I think they're going to get Bates for offensive pass interference. Kind of ran down there and just kind of pushed off. Pass interference, offense number 87. 10-yard penalty, second down. Yeah, sometimes there's an art to playing, right? You got to just kind of lean on a guy. You're going to see Bates. He's going to run down. He's going to run. They call it a pivot, a three pivot. The second you put both your hands on him and extend, that's what they see. It's got to be more of a, a shoulder, an elbow, and you kind of just lean and separate. Young guy hasn't played a lot. Out in space, those are easy calls. So second down and 20. Heineke rarely has time, does here, but throws! Almost intercepted. Boy, Diggs almost had number 10, and then Parsons somehow is 30 yards down the field, and he had a chance at it too, and it's just incomplete. If Parsons would have come down with that ball 30 yards down the field, I give up. <laughs> I'm not sure how to even put that into words. Unbelievable. You're going to see Parsons right here, and he's going to drop. When he's not rushing the passer, he's still able to affect the game. Ball gets deflected a few times. You see Kirst and Diggs. He just can't quite corral it. What a play. Third and 20. Penalty flies. Heineke just dumps it off to Gibson, who has nowhere to go. I think actually Dallas jumped on that play, so they might get another play. We'll find out. Offside, defense number 94 was lined up in the neutral zone. A five-yard penalty, third down. That's on Gregory, who's got an interception in this game, first of his career.
when we talked to Dan Quinn this week and we asked him just about bringing all these guys back, he didn't even really answer us. He just took his two hands and kind of rubbed them together like a mad professor. He said, you know, I don't know if it's this week, but the style of Washington being a little more of a run-heavy team, I don't know if I can show my entire third down package and really unleash all these pass rushers. But he goes, over the course of this year, having all these guys back and healthy, he goes, the sky is the limit for what we can put together from a pass rush standpoint. And boy, does that make that secondary, who's already opportunistic, able to even play even better. Third and 15, stunt is picked up. Heineke floats it into traffic, incomplete. I mean, there were five Cowboys there. And here comes the punt. Jordan Lewis got his hands on it. When these middle zone defenders, the linebackers or the dime or nickel players, when they get such depth, there's no ability to get this ball over their heads. I mean, watch the depth they get. They're 10, 12 yards. You're not going to be able to throw this ball in that window. They're too deep. That's got to be a check down, hopefully get run after catch, and just add yardage to the eventual punt. But you're not going to be able to get that ball up and down. It's two balls that probably should have been picked. Here is Way, who just gets it off, gets hit. And now we'll see if it's running into or a roughing. As it was third and 15, it's Diggs on the punt return who was taken down. Basham is the guy that went in there and got him. If it's the plant leg, it's roughing, it would be a first down. Let's see. You see Basham, he almost got that ball. Kind of reached with his inside arm and just Running ran into him. Defense number 93. Penalties declined. First down, Dallas. Yeah, it's the right call. You said it, Kev. You know, it's got to be the plant leg in order for it to be the 15, you know, personal foul tradition. In that case, just kind of ran into his body. Washington declined the penalty after a good punt. So 2.14 to go, two timeouts for Dallas. We have a moment. Let's check in with Kurt Menefee. Coming up on the Verizon Halftime Show, we've got all the stars and highlights from around the league. Plus, Strahan is back from the stars. It's all coming up on the Verizon Halftime Show. This is what you wanted? You could use more star wipes, I think. Okay. <laughs> I love it. How about Kurt doing a show today with a man who was just in outer space? <laughs> Michael Strahan. I mean, Hall of Famer, number retired last week by the Giants, and he goes to space this week, and now another penalty flag. Shocker. Illegal formation. Offense number 78 was not on the line of scrimmage. The five-yard penalty, first down. You know, the word crisp is not something I would use to describe this game. No, neither one of these teams. I mean, just a lot of penalties, a lot of, you know, lining. We've seen now both tackles of Dallas be called for lining up too far in the backfield. Just sloppy. 203, heading down the two-minute warning. Last play before it. Prescott gets it out into the flat. Man, that could have been dangerous. Because Cameron Curl was right there, simply incomplete. Parsons doing push-ups. I mean, why not? I mean, what else can he do? Maybe return punch for the game's over. Cowboys are dominating. Washington football team hasn't been able to do much. 21-0, two-minute warning. You know, no shirt. Uh, it's aggressive. <laughs> Temperatures in the 40s today here in Landover, Maryland. 21 0 Cowboys, 157 to go on the half. Prescott, the pressure, got it over the middle. Wilson is wide open and dives down a little short of a first down. Boy, it looked like he could have gotten it easily. He went down before it, and now it brings up a third down. Cowboys are hurrying it up. Washington has three timeouts, too, if they were able to get a stop here. Third and short, they're just going to run it to Elliott. He's got a first down, and now it changes the whole outlook of this half. Yeah, you said it. On that last second down, they had a shot there. If they could have forced an incomplete, made him throw it away, found himself in the third down, they could have used some of their timeouts to try to get the ball back. Now, on the flip side, Dak's got two timeouts. They're going to chase points. Coming near side to Michael Gallup, who casually trots out of bounds right at the marker. 
And looked like they spotted it about a half a yard shy of a first down, so it'll be a second down and half a yard. But it does stop the clock with 111 left. I thought he got that. Okay, second down. Over the middle, that got it. Cooper's got it for Curl, came up and hit him, and the Cowboys just about in field goal range now. Washington is just playing so soft. I mean, there's still over a minute to go. The offense still has two timeouts. Got to get up and challenge these guys a little bit. You're going to let them go right down the field. Prescott over the middle, nowhere. Miscommunication, Cooper turned the other way. And 49 seconds to go in the half. Yeah, Mark Cooper just missed the signal. He turned back to Dalton Schultz, and Schultz kind of looked at him, and he kind of tapped his chest like, you know, that's my bad. And I think if he ended up running the out route, which is what Dak ended up throwing, again, there was nobody back there in that kind of cover two hole. They line up Ezekiel Elliott as a wide receiver now at the bottom of your screen. Time. Prescott has it. Can't find anyone, though. Now comes some pressure. Gets away. Prescott looking to run and does so. Gets the first down. Steps out of bounds with 40 seconds left. Beautifully done. And that's just inexperience on Washington's front. Boomi Rutimi, he has him. Just stay on your feet and keep running at his outside shoulder. They teach defensive players never leave your feet. An athlete like Dak Prescott in space, you leave your feet, he's gone. You gotta force him to either throw that ball out of bounds, maybe you make tackle him inbounds, but sure can't let him run for a first down. Now really with two timeouts, they've got plenty of time to do whatever they want. Prescott just dumps over the middle, Cooper in stride, inside the 20, down to the 10. Amari Cooper, a little pitch and catch. And a timeout is called with 32 seconds left. He's just finding open space. You're going to see they kind of clear Holcomb out. He gets a lot of depth playing soft. They allow Cooper to just run that slight little drag route. He finds that pocket underneath. This is a little bit more reminiscent of the Dallas offense we saw the first half this season. In rhythm, Dak getting the ball out of his hand, on time, guys running open. Well, you can't stress enough. I mean, these guys are out of the lineup. You know, it was Dak only for one game early, but Gallup missed a lot of time. Cooper and CeeDee Lamb were in and out of the lineup at different moments. Takes a little time to get everyone back on the same page, back in sync. Games like today will go a long way. First and ten. Prescott is taken down. Washington gets home. Jonathan Allen gets the sack. Make it seven and a half on the year for him. With 27 seconds left, the Cowboys will call their final timeout here. We've talked about how light they've gotten on the outside with COVID and injuries, but one guy who is playing at an all-pro level is Jonathan Allen. You can see him here get the sack. He comes around on a little bit of a ET stunt, beats Tyron Smith. He is playing as well as he ever has in his whole career. And for a defensive line that's taken a lot of hits, Montez Sweat, Chase Young. Now this week with the COVID outbreak, he's the one consistent piece they've had all year, and he's playing as well as he ever has. They get second and 18. They can get a first down at the one. Quick hitter outside to Gallup. And didn't catch that one, so make a third and long. Sometimes you get so worried about dragging your toes, you don't really finish the catch. Yeah. Just didn't haul it in. Yeah, just kind of let it get on his body there. He's trying to drag that left toe. So it'll be a third and 18. And so if you're Dak, you're going to take a look at the end zone quick. If something pops, take it. But be smart. A check down here, an incomplete is an easy field goal attempt. Pressure coming. It's picked up. End zone. Elliott incomplete. A little over his head. Cole Holcomb pretty good on the coverage again. And now it will be a field goal opportunity. But I don't hate it. You know, I don't hate it at all. There's that throw. It's either my guy gets it or nobody gets it. You set yourself up to make it 24-0 before half with a short field goal. As airlines had a 35-yarder and a 38-yarder. 
today. This would be from 37 to make it 24 nothing. And Zerline is three for three, and the Cowboys are up 24 to nothing. And now this from Geico. Is that true? Geico's been saving folks money for 85 years? Yep, that's right. Wait, so if Geico's 85, that makes you... Are you asking if I'm 85 years old? <laughs> I mean, sea turtles live to be 150, so... <laughs> no, I, I, was, I was not. Do I look 85? What? No! You don't... You look young. You, 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 you look young for however old you are. Geico. Saving people money for 85 years. <laughs> And so the Cowboys march down the field, 12 plays, 58 yards. Settle for another short Greg Zerline field goal. Make it 24 to nothing. Mari Cooper had a touchdown earlier today. They went for two and got it. And then Dorrent Armstrong had a fumble return touchdown from 37 yards out. So really the Washington defense has has been okay. It's just the offense has gotten completely dominated by that guy. Micah Parsons has been everywhere. A couple sacks. And now Washington in the final seconds of this first half. As we remind you, the annual Season of Giving initiative focuses on making a positive impact in the lives of children and families that need it most across neighboring communities. As part of this annual initiative, the Washington Football Charitable Foundation and U.S. Marine Corps Teaming up for a Toys for Tots toy collection event today. 50 U.S. Marines were around the stadium gates collecting toys. Well done by everyone. And a great cause in this holiday season. Washington will take a knee and try and figure out how to come back and get back in this game in the second half because the first half stats are all Cowboys. Brought to you by Old Navy as we take a look. I mean, the quarterback comparison, certainly one story. Taylor Heineke, 2 of 12 for 19 yards. Prescott and the Cowboys offense has been fine. They haven't been great, but certainly Dak Prescott doing enough. 162 yards and a touchdown. And a 24 to nothing lead with the Cowboys in first place making a statement. And Kurt and the guys in the halftime show, all the scores and highlights coming your way when we come back. Don't miss the Mask Singer season finale Wednesday on Fox. The season for streaming is here. Join Fox Nation as we celebrate Christmas. If this broadcast or any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the consent of NFL Productions is prohibited. Today's game flow brought to you by Progressive, Bobby Reed special, Michael Abdel. Happy birthday, Nick Franklin. He's 67 today in our tape room. Do a great job. Nick's going to kill me for that one. 24 <laughs> nothing Cowboys over Washington as we start the third in Washington. We'll get the football. Good to see you. Greg Olson, my partner, Pro Bowl tight end. You know him. I'm Kevin Burkhart. You've been in the locker room with Ron Rivera a lot of years. I'm sure you've had a couple games when you've been like this. What's the message? Yeah, unfortunately, I've, me and Ron have shared a few moments similar to this, and the message in the locker room with him is going to be very clear. The scoreboard now becomes completely irrelevant. We have one half as he wants to continue to build this culture in Washington to a playoff and a championship team. He feels he'll learn more about his team today in the second half. Who fights, who battles, who continues to just chip away. He'll learn more in this second half than maybe any other moment in this entire season. Well, if they are going to chip away, they get the ball first, see what they can do. Let's go downstairs to Pam Oliver. Obviously a huge hole for Washington to try to climb out of, and I asked Ron Rivera, how do you hope to do that? He told me one play at a time. He said he told the team to absolutely forget about that first half. He wants to see more completions because they're not running the ball well. An injury for them, left tackle Charles Leno. He has a back injury and is questionable for Dallas. Well, Mike McCarthy couldn't have been happier. I asked him about things going so well. He said, well, the thing I want to avoid are those pain in the butt penalties as he called them he said we need to stay after them defensively he described that group as awesome 
Uh, they are playing awesome right now. And guess what? Micah Parsons right there on the coverage. Seals Jones can't haul it in. And the Dallas defense picking up exactly where they left off, Greg. Micah Parsons originally started as the free defender. Everyone was in man, and he was the non-man defender. Once Seals Jones ran the drag route, he picks him up. They kind of pass those off. They banjo those routes. He's everywhere, but that's a ball that he needs to catch. It doesn't seem like a splash play. Probably gets tackled, but we can't be in second and ten every down, right? If you're Ron Rivera, he's telling them that. We've got to find a way to make a big play. Blitz is coming. Heineke sees it, floats one, looking for McLaurin, jumps to get it incomplete. He doesn't have a catch today. He only had one target today. And that's because Diggs has covered him like a blanket, just like he did right there. All day, this has been the matchup. You've wondered, where's Terry McLaurin? Well, Trayvon Diggs has been covering him no matter where he lines up. Yes, the ball was underthrown. Yes, we've seen that. The difference is, look at the eyes of Diggs. He looks back and finds the ball. That's what the officiating crew wants to see, not just run blindly into the chest of the receiver. Right now, Diggs has won this matchup. And no matter where McLaurin lines up, Diggs is on. Third and long. Heineke pressure again, floats it over the middle. Humphreys has it for the first down. That's his third catch of the day. The only receiver that's caught a ball for Washington, but a much needed first. And if you want to give your quarterback time, this is all on purpose. See them using the back and the tight end. Gibson Bates, they're going to hold, they're going to contain those guys. We're not going to get as many guys into the route. But Scott Turner is not going to con continue to see Taylor Heineke on his back. That time, Taylor, Adam Humphreys wins his matchup. Heineke finds him. It all starts with protection. Quick throw here. Get it out to Carter, who gets buried right off the bat. Well, McLaurin only had two catches last week. He's being shut out today. And Diggs, you talked about the shadow. Show us why it's worked. He's been in his pocket the entire game. We've talked a lot about his ball skills and whatnot, but he's showing today against high-level receivers, he can line up in the slot. He can line up on one boundary side. He can line up to the field side. There's not a lot of defensive backs who are comfortable aligning in all the different spots. It's not as simple as just you have him. There is a little bit of a system in place for him to be able to line up inside and outside. On the fake, he's done a great job. And quick pass Humphreys again. For a short game, brings up third down. Well, we haven't really seen Diggs do that. He's done a lot, he leads the league in interceptions, but that's kind of a new element, right? It is. The, the word on Diggs had always been he's very opportunistic. He's around the ball. He might not necessarily be in everyone's hip pocket the whole game, lock down, you know, Darrell Revis, follow a guy. But we're seeing him do it today. If he can continue to expand what he can do, his skill set, Dan Quinn's just going to have one more piece in his arsenal that as he puts together a game plan each week, makes him really, really challenging. Third and five, four-man rush. Heineke sees it, steps away from it. Here comes pressure, gets rid of it. Going deep for McLaurin, who caught it! No, it's incomplete. He had to go up so high, and the ground forced it out, and now you hope he's okay. Yeah, you hope he's okay. He came down hard. You said it, KB. He went so high. He's just running a clear. Now, the rest of this route is just improv. You saw Heineke kind of point and go deep. The scramble drill, he had it. Just got to hope after hitting the ground. You see Heineke's kind of playing traffic cop, saying, go deep, go deep. He caught it, and watch when he comes down hard. The ball just pops out. You just got to hope at this point that he's okay. He wasn't able to cushion his fall at all. I mean, he's their top receiver, right? He's a great player. And you see Classy by the Cowboys, too, to be down there, make sure he's okay. That's a lot of respect there. And there's Diggs, who's been covering to make sure, too. But what it brings up is another fourth down. Yeah, third down's been a challenge. You know, they, they have not been real good on third down. Their first conversion was just on this possession by Humphreys. Just out of sorts today. This is not the style Washington wants to play offensively. They accept that. They lean into it. And when you find yourself down by so much, at some point you expect as this half goes on for them to kind of open up the offense a little bit, start chasing some points. And so Way will punt it away on a fourth and five.
Gonna bounce short, and Lamb tells everyone to get out of the way. And they do, and Dallas will take over at about their own 16-yard line. Up 24 to nothing here in the third. Some of us were born. Well, the 123rd meeting between these two rivals. Dallas leading the series. It goes back a long time. A lot of memorable games, obviously. And this one, an important game. Dallas with a two-game lead in the division. But Washington controls their own destiny coming in. But obviously, the Cowboys have owned it so far. 24 to nothing early in the third quarter. Well, L. Collins is back in the game at right tackle. He had some cramping issues, according to Pam, but back in there. They get it to Elliott out of a three wide receiver set. Walking with. And so, you know, Greg, you, you talk about this Dallas offense, which even though they're up 24 0, they haven't totally gotten in sync. Part of the reason is the first real game as they go fast here to have Gallup and Cooper and Lamb together. It's, it's technically the third game, but look at the snap total. They just haven't been together. And Dak Prescott said, yeah, we're just, we're not feeling it crisply right now. And that time, beautiful throw and catch. Gallup, was he in? Yes, he is, as well done for the first down. So people at home are wondering, well, wait a second. They've been teammates for, for a while. How are they not in sync? Because it takes time. It takes time on the field. It takes time in the classroom for these guys to just get used to. Every year is so new. Every year has its own flavor and its own feel. They go fast here. Gallup again catches and then retreats. Landon Collins hit him. And past experience, yes, it does play in. There is a built-up relationship. There's a built-up consistency level when you play with a guy for a long time. But not if you haven't had him all year. Not if you haven't played this season together. There's still a little element of just getting back into a groove and getting into a feel. Elliott on the short carry. And so do you think that the offense has found any of that today or not yet? I think it's been spotty. I think we saw it at times. I think we saw it in the final drive of the, the first half that eventually settled for a field goal, but they had some nice rhythm. They were getting the ball in and out of his hand. It was mostly through the air. It looks like we got an injury timeout. Daniel Wise is down. I mean, Washington only had four healthy defensive ends today, and they work on Wise. Injury timeout back after this. This holiday, Verizon has the deal. They have dominated the game. Cowboys offense has done enough. Amari Cooper with a touchdown. Three field goals from Greg Zerline. They're going to double jumbo formation right here. Lamb and Elliott in the backfield. That's Williams, a guard in motion. They flip it to C.D. Lamb. Why not? C.D. Lamb breaks free. <laughs> that was a nifty little play. He's up to the 49 at a first down. Nice wrinkle here by Kellen Moore. You can tell he had that one on his on his play sheet in third and long. Brings over the offensive lineman Williams, who does a nice job setting. Dalton Schultz gets to the next level. He's got C.D. Lamb playing tailback with Zeke Elliott playing like an offset fullback. Nice job by Zeke. I mean, it wasn't a killer block, but he got in the way enough and. CeeDee Lamb has a chance to show his open field running there on third down. On first down, pressure up the middle. Prescott steps up, flag on the play. Lamb has the catch. And he's right at the first down marker. Uh, there is a penalty, so let's unfold that one first. Offside, defense number 93 was lined up in a neutral zone. Penalties declined. First down, Dallas. It feels like it's the 17th offsides of the game. Yeah, I, I'm not, not quite. I mean, for, especially for a player of his caliber. I know they're playing some young guys up front, and whatnot, but those are the simple things that you control. Pre-snap penalties and post-snap penalties. Very different. First down. And catch is made, nearly picked. McCain made a great break on the ball, but Turner held on. 
or Wilson held on, make that. You know, conventional wisdom would say you got a 24-point lead, sit on the ball, run it, take the air out of it, and get out of here with the win. But I love Mike McCarthy, Kellen Moore. They say, you know, we can take this half to work on ourselves. You see him here going up tempo. He's got all day. Throws back across his body. Incomplete. Elliott, the intended receiver. Going to bring up a third down and five. At this point in the season, you know, just to finish our conversation on this, at this point in the season, reps in practice continue to be taken out. They try to get guys in and off their feet. Guys are banged up and dinged up. These, in essence, are weekly reps that they can carry forward with them. We've talked, getting these pieces back together, getting this offense back in sync with all of their weapons. What we can't get in practice, where we can make up an entire half of playing good football and keep building for the rest of the season. Third and five, and that pass a little off for Cooper. Incomplete. Danny Johnson was in the area. Little chess match there. Dak Prescott, this Washington defense. Washington showed all those guys up in the pressure. The two guys standing right over the center. He checked, thinking they were going to bring pressure and he was going to throw a quick screen. Those guys bailed. Sets up a fourth down. I think this is kind of your point, right? Mike McCarthy's going to go for it. Absolutely. Why not? Now is your opportunities to develop this confidence that you hope, if you're Dallas, can carry you forward through this home stretch. And clock goes on down to zero. There's a penalty flag that'll be a delay of game. Delay of game. Offense. Five yard penalty, fourth down. So just try to draw them off sides with the hard count didn't work and now the Cowboys will punt it away. Yeah, obviously they didn't feel very good about that field goal distance. It would have been a little over 50 yards. They figure at this point play the field position game, try to pin Washington back with how well your defense has played. You're hoping for a three and out and get the ball back pretty much right around the same place that you just punted it to them. Brian Anger has had a fine year punting for the Cowboys. Going to drop that one right inside the 10. Another job well done by Anger. Washington had a big hole, 24-0. USA, this is Stephanie. Hi. Through Kentucky and the Midwest. Text Tornadoes to 90999. Give $10 to the American Red Cross Southern and Midwest Tornadoes Relief today. Jerry Jones and his Cowboys have come to play today. Defense has been the story. They have dominated, allowing 46 total yards to Washington. 24 nothing. See if Heineke can get something going here. Fires far side of the field. That's not it. Carter, the intended receiver. Brown on the coverage. Pam Oliver on the sidelines. Pam. Well, Kevin, you saw Washington wide receiver Terry McLaurin come down hard on that play. Looked like he hit his head. Well, he was examined in the medical tent and quickly walked into the locker room. McLaurin is being evaluated for a concussion. Gosh, that replay just hurts. He went down so hard. Pam, thanks. And you hope he's okay. So a team that was not doing anything on offense, shorthanded without McKissick and Logan Thomas today. And now their number one receiver goes out too. Not great. Gibson has a hole for the first time today. He's streaking across the 20 and a first down. Boy, did he need that. He only had 17 yards rushing. That's going to be his long. For whatever reason, you're going to see they're going to move these guys late. You're going to see Micah Parsons come up. He's going to bump the front over. And Washington going quick here. Now I'm not sure if this play got off as the whistle blows. It's because the Cowboys called a timeout. The snap. Timeout. Dallas. Well, why don't you go back and show us again? Yeah. You were cut off so rudely there, Greg. <laughs> then go and hurry up. Makes it hard on the guys in the box. You're going to see Parsons wants to get in on this front, but he knows that he needs to move the two interior defensive linemen into the opposite gaps. You're going to see they bump him, and it's just enough indecision. Flowers is able to cut off Micah Parsons, and that's really the first true rush lane that we've seen Washington be able to exploit. That's what we've come to see from them the last few weeks. We saw him run the ball really well last week against Las Vegas. 
Haven't seen a lot of it so far today. I mean, look at the offense during the four-game win streak, obviously holding the ball, converting third downs. They've done none of that today, obviously. Heineke, kind of sidearm delivery to Bates, who has room, has blocking, has a first down, and he's out across the 40 to John Bates, the rookie from Boise State. Leno and Larson with good-looking blocks to spring him. The best thing Bates does here is he finds his landmark. These are the train tracks. Watch where he ends up. It allows Flowers to have the kick out, get out in front. Here's a tempo you were asking for from Washington. It gets Gibson around the edge. Another positive game. As Gibson up to the 47-yard line, picks up five on the run. I'd like to see him stay in this rhythm. I'd like to see him can keep pushing the issue, make Dallas play on their heels. So much of the advantage of playing with tempo is it really limits the defensive play caller's call sheet. There's only certain plays that you can get in when an offense is continuing to get over the ball and snap it quick. So if you want to slow down a defense that's really had your number, sometimes going up tempo can really slow them down before the ball is snapped. Heineke, Patterson's wide open, first down and more as he's inside the 45. So Jared Patterson has his first touch today, giving a little breather to Gibson as they'll continue with the up tempo. Seems to have a little something on this drive, really the first time all day. It looks like now they're going to slow it down a little bit, but what they did is they allowed Dallas to get a fresh front in. They, you know, some of the defensive linemen ran out, some subs came off the bench to kind of refresh that pass rush. It puts a lot of pressure on pass rushers to rush, play in and play out. If you can keep them on the field, you can gain an advantage. Pressure up the middle. Heineke spins away. Nice move. Sets. Launches deep. Looking for Sam. He's got it. And they say no. He's out of bounds. Oh, Cam Sims. Incredible effort against Diggs, but he did not land inbounds. You do not see many wide receivers win 50-50 jump balls against Diggs. You're going to see him. He's going to run an out and up, a little two-part. Diggs has this ball in his sights. One. Let's see. Gets his left foot. It looks like his left hip is in bounds, Kev. That's a touchdown. I think that's a touchdown. That is an incredible Whoa. play. Let's see. It, yeah, his left knee is in. He's that's down. a touchdown. The ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. Washington has challenged that ruling. Washington challenge. This looks to be a score. We'll check during the break and be back after this. It is 36th on Fox. Let's go to our rules expert, Dean Blandino. Dean, they just said it's a touchdown. Do you agree? I agree. I remember watching football as a kid, and John Madden used to say one knee equals two feet. That's exactly what happened. He had control. Sims got his right knee down, maintains control. Good call and replay to overturn. Great challenge by Ron Rivera. All right, Dean, appreciate that. So they will go for two to try to make it a two-score game here. Heineke in trouble, spins away. Will he run it? He's going to try it. He's going to die for the end zone. He hits the pylon, and it's good for two. And we got a little juice here for the first time this afternoon. Does any player love diving for the left pylon more than Taylor Heineke? <laughs> it seems like every moment of his career back last year in that Tampa playoff game, he did the exact same thing. Well, they got a long way to go, but they just made it a lot closer. You see clearly in. So you heard the touchdown. The challenge by Washington. Call was overturned of incomplete. And now the two-point conversion makes it a two-score game. By the way, back to that touchdown. That was an incredible play. First by Heineke to spin out. And then Sims leaping over Trayvon Diggs, the league leader in interceptions. That play went from an almost sack by Micah Parsons. Heineke spins out, kind of reverses field and comes. Check this out here. Parsons is going to get pressure on him. He's going to beat Flowers. Now watch, he's going to just bail out to his left. That gives him the time to set his feet. And then the 50-50 jump ball by Sims over Diggs. That's one of the few defensive players that you just don't, he doesn't lose that. And boy, Sims is pumped. 
Uh, that's pretty good. Hey, yeah. Respect, man. After the touchdown, Dick said that was good. Respect on that one. And so, this crowd comes to life for the first time today, and it's back in Dak Prescott's hands against his Washington defense. Well, hey, elite quarterbacks on center stage Thursday Night Football. Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs take on Justin Herbert of the Chargers. That's a great game. 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on Fox, NFL Network, and streaming on Prime Video. That is going to be a good one to watch at AFC West. The Chiefs are obliterating the Raiders 38-9 today. Chargers play the Giants later. Chargers beat them earlier this year. 24-8 here to get the run game going and Clement with a big run breaking tackles that's a good start for Dallas of this drive and he's got a first down the last drive we saw Dallas go up tempo go no huddle we'll see him here now they're trying to slow things down this game has changed a little bit in its complexion and expect Dallas to continue to stay aggressive Continue to push the action. Again, Connor Williams as a fullback. Clement gets another chance. Running behind Williams. And across the 40 goes Clement. Pick up six more. And interesting for Clement, right, who grew up in South Jersey, just outside of Philadelphia. A big Cowboys fan. And now getting a chance to make an impact here today with Pollard Hurd. He carries 31 yards. And there's a timeout on the field. It looks like they're looking at Bobby McCain, and he's going to be taken out. At least for a play. That's a starting free safety for Washington. Just seems every other play, Washington has somebody dinged up, somebody leaving. It's just been a tough few weeks for them in the injury department. Yeah, Jeremy Reeves just came into the game. He was just called up from the practice squad. Number 39. So, you know, part of this was Washington scoring finally and getting back in the game. But now they need their D to make a stop. Otherwise, it's that touchdowns for nothing. There's Reeves, second and four, Dallas. Clement again, up the middle, and he stacked up. Half yard there, Deron Payne pushing that pile. Brings up a pretty large third down. Does. Washington can find a way to get off the field here and get their ball back to their offense. That last drive, they came to life. Their body language, their sideline. All of a sudden, what seemed like a really daunting task being down 24. They're on the verge here of this game being flipped. In order to do that, they've got to find a way to get off the field. They've shown this a lot. We've seen him bring it a few times. We've seen him drop. Here they drop. Prescott sees it, steps up, can't find it. Anyone. Prescott taken down. Duran Payne for the sack. And Washington gets the stop they needed. We've seen this look a lot, these two guys, but on this case, they're going to drop into those zones that we've talked about, where now it's on Dak to find the window. But take a look. There's nowhere to go with the ball. He probably could have taken off to run, but he knows he's got a decent amount of yards he's got to gain. Durant Payne closes the gap there for a huge, huge stop. Carter waits deep. Going to let it go over his head, and it goes into the end zone, and Washington will take over on their own 20-yard line with 4.05 to go in this third quarter, 24-8. to eight. You know, it's kind of fitting that Dave Landino mentioned, you remember John Madden, one knee equals two feet? Well, guess what? Christmas Day, Fox Sports proudly presents a documentary tribute to one of football's most beloved figures, the coach, broadcaster, the video game. It's all Madden premiering Christmas Day on Fox. That's must-watch TV. Cannot wait and to see it. At least in my house. I mean... Everyone, every member of my family kind of identifies with Madden in a different era, a different job description, but that's going to be, that's going to be really special. We've seen some advanced cuts of it.
KB, and it's it's going to be pretty unique and special. So now, after Washington finally got some offense on the board, I and mean, then they had 47 yards of offense total until the last drive when they went 90 yards for the touchdown. Heineke blitz is coming, set up a screen. Demarcus Lawrence is there, and that kind of helps stop that play, and he's going to lose a couple yards. Initially, it looked like there was something there, but give credit to Lawrence. He kind of recognized so, so often what these on these screens, the offensive linemen are going to set, and they're going to try to entice the D linemen to think they've got a free run. But experienced players like Lawrence, they've seen it so many times. If that guy's not blocking you, something's up. He redirects, he comes, chases down the line, and prevents what could have been a pretty, pretty successful first down for Washington. Second and 12, four-man rush. Here comes Gregory. Gets it off to Gibson, who's across the 25. Boy, honey, ball comes loose. Dallas says they have it. Jordan Lewis punched it free. And they do have it. And Lewis recovered it. Another turnover for this Cowboys defense, the third one today. And just when they had something going, Ball gets just punched out, it's clearly, clearly out. He's got the most fumbles in the entire league as a running back for a young kid who's really starting to become the workhorse back here in Washington. That's been his Achilles heel, is holding on to the ball. I've been around running backs coaches that when they coach running backs, they say, you got three jobs and they're in this order. You're gonna pass protect, you're gonna protect the ball, and then you're going to run with the ball. If you can't do the first two, we're not going to give you the ball. And it's just such a shame. He's such a talented kid. And now, after Washington grabbed a little momentum, Dallas can really send in the dagger here. Up 24 to 8, 312 to go in the third. Corey Clement remains in the game at tailback. And a big workload in this second half. They'll throw it out to Gallup. One on one. Gallup stays in bounds beautifully. He's got a first down. I go Gallup doing work as he got by William Jackson. We call this sudden change. You find yourself sitting on the sideline, you're watching your offense, now all of a sudden the game flips. You've got to find a way to rally now as a defense and come out and find a way to get a stop. You'd be surprised at some point here to see a shot. Clement tries to find a little seam up the middle, not much, maybe two and a half. We talked about these three receivers being back together and like finally healthy. Cooper played last week, a few snaps, but he wasn't right coming off of COVID. They've all had a big impact, over 50 yards, and now an injury. Tyron Smith just went to get up and then dropped to a knee, the left tackle. A seven-time Pro Bowler for Dallas. So now concerned for Smith, who missed a few games earlier this season with an ankle injury. Look, Cowboys' first six games, they were flying high, right? Five and one, 34 points per game. The yards, insane, 461. And then, you know, they had some issues. A lot of guys missed time with injury. We talked about everybody being on the same page. Those are all the numbers in the games they've missed. It doesn't include, you know, Gallup missed so much time out since week one. And, you know, I'm not saying that's the only reason, but the last six games at three and three, they've been up and down. They still have the number one overall offense in the league, but they just haven't been crisp from start to finish. Up 24-8 here, second and seven. Prescott looking, throwing, knocked away beautifully. Kendall Fuller, great break on the ball. See, we can see what happened to Tyron Smith. You see Smith right here. Uh, McGovern, McGovern just kind of falls on that left leg, bends underneath him. You see him checking out his knee, his lower leg. It's the guy they cannot afford to lose. Yeah, Ty and Sicky in there now at left tackle. Prescott on third down, throwing Forrest out of the field, has a completion. Clement and tackled immediately by Cam Curl. Well done. There's a penalty flag on the far side of the field, too. And it looks like it's going to be against Dallas.
Pass interference, offense number 88. That penalty's declined, forked out. And so it'll be another field goal try for Greg Zerline. Called it on Lamb right here. Just kind of running into his chest, pushing him, I don't know. Didn't really have much of an effect on the overall outcome. They declined the penalty, but you know, kind of just ran into his chest and official saw some contact. Ended up not really being much of a factor regardless. Great stop though by Washington's defense. And offense put him in another tough spot with the turnover in their own territory to force a field goal here is a win. As airline looking for his fourth field goal today. This one from 29 yards out. And it's up and good. Make it 27 to 8. Cowboys. And now this from Pepsi and Uber Eats. Hun, those ribs ready? No. Nope. Ribs. Better with Pepsi. <sighs> Tonight, I'll be eating a petite filet with goat cheese fritters. Thanks. Captain Fear, what are you so afraid of? Spiders? Public speaking? Commitment? So the Cowboys have three takeaways today. Last one, Jordan Lewis forced to fumble, recovered it, but Washington's D holds him to a field goal. 27 8, your score, 135 to go in this third quarter. Greg Zerline with four field goals today, all inside 40 yards. Cowboys defense has been terrific. And obviously a big mountain to climb for Taylor Heineke and this Washington football team offense. Heineke, 10 of 24, 113 yards, a TD interception, but finally got the offense going with a 90-yard drive last time. Of course, now they're playing against the clock. Well, it's considered the league's most prestigious honor. The Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year Award recognizes NFL players who have exhibited excellence on the field and whose passion to impact lives extends beyond the game. This year's nominee for Dallas, Dak Prescott. And for Washington, it's Jonathan Allen. NFL Man of the Year announced Super Bowl week at NFL Honors Thursday, February 10th. To learn about all of this year's nominees, visit NFL.com slash Man of the Year. So it's good for Dak and Jonathan. Well done in their communities. Gibson now will take a seat. Jared Patterson comes on the backfield. Gibson after the fumble. He was benched earlier this year in a game by Ron Rivera for those fumbling issues. Not sure if he's benched or just getting a breather. Here's Heineke. Pressure at his feet. Flag flies. Caught by Patterson. Van Der Esch wrestles him to the ground. It's a lot of action for nothing. No gain. And let's see what the flag is. Holding offense number 79. 10 yard penalty, still first down. Eric Flowers, he has him blocked. You can see him, he's right in front of him. All he has to do is reset his hands. Instead, he kind of torques Hill and he throws him to the ground. Not only is it a penalty, John Matsko, the offensive line coach, I would sit in those meetings for a decade. When you throw defensive players on the ground, someone's gonna get injured. He would teach his guys, never do we take people to the ground protect each other's legs. Not only is it a penalty, he's lucky he didn't throw him into the legs of Taylor Heineken. So first and 20, they're gonna run it to Patterson. Just looking for any kind of room. And he's out near the 20. He touched on Antonio Gibson now being on the sideline. He's kind of just standing watching behind that first row of subs. You mentioned earlier in the year, he got benched for a fumble and then he kind of came to life through that winning streak. I think they have to be careful here. They're gonna need Gibson the rest of this season. He's become that kind of workhorse back. J.D. McKissick's not playing. If anything, I think I'd get him back into the game and get him a touch. They gotta keep this young kid's confidence up because if they have a shot at the playoffs, they're gonna need him. Pressure coming, high. He dropped again. It's to Marcus Lawrence. This defense has had themselves a day.
Well, there's jumping a snap, and then there's perfectly timing. I mean, he is getting off immediately. He must have had a beat on Heineke's snap count. Right even out of his stance. It's just a race to the quarterback. This front has become an absolute force now that they're healthy. End of the third quarter, all Dallas. I, I feel like we're at, uh, you know, old RFK, like everything's shaking right now, right? Remember, the, now Pam knows about that. She's been on many a sideline when RFK was rocking and rolling. But here, it's been the Cowboys as the visitor, as a two-game leader in the NFC. These teams play each other twice in the next three weeks, and Washington controlled their own destiny, but Dallas's defense has controlled this game. As we start the fourth, Carter has a catch and works his way out across the 20. And, and that's the thing, Greg. You come into today in, in, you know, for Washington, wow, like they control their own destiny. Dallas is kind of reminded, of, hang on, we're the team that's in first place, right? And this is what we thought six weeks ago. When Dallas was 6-1, and one, they were riding high. It was really a foregone conclusion that they, not only were they going to win the NFC East, they were in the conversation with Green Bay, Arizona, other teams that started out hot about being that lone number one seed and getting the bye. So they've discovered their magic at the right time. Short kick. And Diggs thinking about it. <laughs> he's going to let it go. He thought about it for a second. But he's going to let it go. And we'll see the Cowboys offense out on the field. So look, I mean, they've they've dominated this game. And, you know, you took a total yards, 293 to 146. You talked about when we started, Cowboys use this second half to get your offense right. So what's left for you to see for them to take into, you know, this week to get the offense right? Or are they there yet? No, I still think you need to see a continuous drive. We've seen elements at times of what they want to be, right? Pass first, then establish some sort of run identity, but finish with a touchdown. We've seen them settle now for four field goals, go on a long drive, put a touchdown on the board. I think they'd feel a little bit better about how this game ended. And Corey Clement getting a big workload today for the first time in years for him with Pollard out. And, you know, Elliott's battled with that knee injury, but you know, really a good time to give Zeke a rest and see what Clement can do. See the leaders in this game today. Cooper had a touchdown earlier in the game. They had a defensive touchdown, but the defense has ruled the day. Michael Parsons, two sacks, forced fumble. They've got three turnovers. Gregory has an insane interception, his first of his career. That's the story. Second down. Prescott near side. Lamb, who was tackled quickly, just a gain of three by Fuller, brings up third down. It's funny, as you might look at the score and be like, man, Washington Z got shredded. I think their D's been fine. I think their D has really probably performed above expectations. Coming in, you knew you had a daunting task with this high power, you know, the potential of this high power offense of Dallas being number one in the league. You lose last minute your backups who are backing up your star defensive ends, and they're hanging in there, only giving up one touchdown. The third down, they drop out of the blitz, get a quick hit from Curl again. Clement can't hang on, wouldn't have been short of the first down anyway, and they force another punt. Again, you know, another. Just another quick possession, giving the ball right back to Washington. These are the possessions. Again, the score is irrelevant. The score is unlikely. It's most likely out of out of pace here. But they've got to finish these games with a little energy, a little momentum, because they are going to need to carry it forward through the rest of the year. You don't want to keep sputtering, even though you won the game. Because these games have a lasting impact as you move forward to the playoffs. Carter says let it go, and Anger puts it out of bounds. See where they mark it. Likely right around the 20, and right at the 20. Washington football down 27 to 8 here in the fourth. Cardinals are the best team in football with that record, 10 2. They play the Rams, huge game on Monday night. Packers have. The number two seed, nine and three. Buccaneers play the Bills later today. The Cowboys will move to a nine-win team with a win here today. And then, you know, you look at the last couple wild card. It, it is tight. Falcons are winning, and they could move right in the mix. So it's really anyone's game for the last two wild card spots. Heideke in trouble and sacked again. Neville Gallimore, welcome back. His first game of the year, and he gets a sack, and Heineke is limping. 
And Heineke's had a long day. See him kind of go down. Here's Gallimore. He's just going to go one on one with the center. Tyler Larson, these five man fronts we've touched on all day, put such pressure on the offensive line because everyone's one on one. They were thrilled this week to get Gallimore back. I hope Heineke's okay, He's still down, but. And this front from Dallas now, this is a different defense. You got these guys back. Oh, now Larson's is down too. Yeah, so you've got Kyle Allen warming up. You've got Larson, who was the third center of the year, who got hurt a few weeks ago with an MCL, came back today, and now he's out. Washington's so banged up, and you just concerned for those two players. Yeah, played with Larson in Carolina. He's a great young kid. Just hope oh, they're bringing out the cart. It's hard to know which for which guy, but just hope that Heineke and Larson are both okay. Oh, man. Heineke is getting to his feet. Larson is not. Yeah, I didn't, I guess on that bull rush, I didn't, I didn't see Larson down, but unfortunate here for him. And so injuries, multiple timeout here in Landover. to go Tyler Larson gets carted off the center for the Washington football team it's a Keith Ismail who made his first NFL start at center last week because Larson was hurt and Taylor Heineke was slow to get up and he's obviously out of the game so Kyle Allen in the game for the second time today Heineke has taken a beating here today and that throw that screen never had a chance I mean Heineke's gotten sacked four times but it feels like Greg he has been pressured on literally every drop back he has, and we've talked about it all day. This Dallas defense with these guys back, Gallimore, Randy Gregory back from injury, Demarcus Lawrence back from injury to go along with Parsons of Diggy Zoo. I mean, this is a as formidable when all playing together healthy. This is becoming as formidable a defensive front and as a result as formidable as a defense as, as there really is in the playoff picture around the league. A third down and 20, four man rush. Allen gets it over the middle. Ricky Seals Jones has a catch, but he's nowhere near a first down. And out comes the punt team. So there's Washington had a slight glimmer of hope after now some tempers flare. Penalty flags fly. I think they're saying this is going to be on Dallas. This could give Washington a fresh set of downs. There were unsportsmanlike conduct fouls called by both teams. Taunting, 83 offense. Taunting, 90 defense. Those play, those penalties offset will be fourth down. That's the first taunting foul for each of those players toward disqualification. And so with the two fouls, they offset. It's still a punt on fourth down for Washington with 12-13 to go. Here's Lamb. Going to let it bounce. Look, this game has been about the Cowboys defense, Greg, and really on so many different levels. You talked about them being healthy. They flashed everything they got in the bag today. And it's been, it's really been at all levels. You know, it started us up front with the pass rush, the pick, the fumble for a touchdown, the back end, which what Diggs was able to do with Terry McLaurin. I mean, they really just top to bottom, forcing turnovers, getting off the field on third down. Those are the characteristics of a playoff defense, a defense that can take their team deep on a run and Taylor Heineke's just had a long day. Even when they didn't get home on a sack, it seemed like almost every pass he was on his back, guys in his face. And so the Cowboys in control. Jaquan Hardy on the field today. Gets a chance in the backfield making his NFL debut this afternoon. Called up from the practice squad and he gets a carry. Why not? Cowboys up big. 
And picks up a couple yards on his first NFL carry. Game break time. Let's say hello to Carissa Thompson. Hello, Kevin. Remember when everyone said what's wrong with the Chiefs? They're not saying that now. Derek Gore takes this one 51 yards to the house as the Chiefs will win their sixth consecutive game, 48 to 9. Kevin? Good, this is Carissa. Yeah, so everyone was worried about the Chiefs, and with that win, safe to say they're going to hold on for the win. They're going to tie New England for the number one seed. Yeah, you don't have to be great all year in the NFL. You have to be good in the beginning, hang tight, and then you have to be great at the end when it matters. And saw it last year with the Bucs. As Prescott slides down. And we're seeing it a little bit now as Kansas City finding their life. Their defense is playing really well to go along with, of course, the offense we've seen kind of dominate the league over the last few years with Mahomes and company. So sometimes in the NFL, it's just about finding it at the right time. Is this the right time for Dallas? It's a good step in the right direction. That's for sure. Yeah, a lot of positives today. Think about the Raiders too, right? They had that big win over Dallas on Thanksgiving. Said, man, look at the momentum. They lost a heartbreaker last week and blown out today. There goes that for them. Prescott back to throw, pressure on him, in trouble. Just trying to run for his life now, still alive. Prescott just throws on the run, and is that a catch? It sure looked like it, and it is. Caught inbounds, and now a scuffle breaks out, and a full, a full-on fight. Cowboys bench racing down the sideline. Cooper was involved, there were multiple players involved. I think Lyle Collins was in there as well. Shaka Tony from Washington. It's getting ugly here. They did not like the hit that William Bradley King put on Dak on the sideline. His offensive line, you touched on it, Lael Collins. Almost the entire bench went after him. They did not like the late push out of bounds. I mean, he was in bounds. It's, it's a legal play, but they did not like it there on the Cowboys bench. Zeke pushes him. Collins comes over and blasts him. Teams are going to protect their quarterback. Teams do not like to see their franchise quarterback be knocked out of bounds. Granted, it was a legal hit. But saw some fight there from Dallas. Mm -hmm. You see Thompson putting his helmet on. He said, I'm going into the fight. At least I'm going to put my helmet on. Mike McCarthy is smiling inside, seeing his team go fight for each other. Uh, now they have to sort out all the penalties. And Collins is going to be ejected. Mm -hmm. Dak just gave him an old slap on the back like, I appreciate you, brother. I'll help pay your fine. <laughs> well, obviously, the Cowboys are going to go where they want to go, which is Los Angeles at the end of the year. They need Dak Prescott healthy. There were fouls by both teams. Offside, defense number 56 was lined up in a neutral zone. That penalty is disregarded by rule. After the play was over, personal foul, offense number 71, who has been disqualified from the game. A 15-yard penalty, third down. So Collins has been ejected for protecting his quarterback. And I'd like to welcome those of you who saw the Falcons beat the Panthers 29-21 to here in Landover, Maryland. Cowboys have dominated this game from the get-go. They had an 18-point first quarter. Defense has been outstanding, and that's really the story here. Micah Parsons, another outstanding performance, too. Glad to have you with us. Pam Oliver down on the field. Greg Olson, I'm Kevin Burkhart. Our entire NFL on Fox crew. Artie Kempner, our director. Pete Machesco, our producer. 27-8 Cowboys. 10-22 to go in this game. Dallas with a two-game lead in the division, looking to make it three. And coming into today, Washington had the fate in their hands if they won out, so this would change that today. And after that, they will punt it away. They did, but if you're Washington, and you're Ron Rivera, and you bring your group together, you know, barring some sort of miracle, right, you find yourself, you need to reset, right? You need to take a chance and say, all right, guys, today was clearly not our day. Our hopes of winning the division took a huge hit. But as we saw earlier on that playoff graphic, they still find themselves right there in the mix at 6-7 and seven if they lose today. And as crazy as it sounds, they got a shot for one of those last wild card spots. 
all hope cannot be lost because of today's result. And Dallas will down it. Well, you look at there's so many standouts defensively for the Cowboys. Micah Parsons, and you see tempers a little flaring again, and the officials trying to separate them best they can. Parsons has been amazing. Gregory, his first game back from the knee. Interception first of his career. Dorrance Armstrong had a fumble recovery touchdown from 37 yards. Lawrence, his second game, has a sack. And the Cowboys fans making some noise. That's what you hear on your TV. Sometimes the NFL can be very, very simple. If your star players play like stars, and Dallas has plenty of them, if they play like stars, you can throw scheme out the window. You can throw... You have an advantage over everybody you play. When you look at this healthy Dallas squad, they have stars everywhere. It's Patterson who's got a first down for Washington. Well, I think your point first about Washington is this. They're going to lose this game and fall to six and seven. But there's a host of teams right there. They would be tied with Philadelphia and Minnesota with the same record at six and seven. And theoretically, you know, Washington has a better record in conference, right? So they would still be in the playoff mix as ugly as this one has been. And the drop there by Humphreys. Big question for them. There's so many injuries today. Heineke went down, and we saw so many guys going on and off the field. Yeah, but the season the, is not over, absolutely. I guess is my point. Totally, and I think that's the concerning part if you're Washington. You've seen a lot of your players. You came in shorthanded, and now you've exited this game not only with a loss, but you've exited this game with more and more injuries. We we'll see what happened with Heineke. We saw Terry McLaurin go out earlier. If anybody can do it, it's Ron Rivera, but it's a tall task. Patterson again, big hole. And he's got a first down up near midfield. So Patterson getting some reps. The rookie from Buffalo who a monster, monster season last year. As you see, remember Mike McCarthy had that guaranteed win. So yeah, felt good about it. Felt like they're going to win. Ron Rivera said it was a mistake. I guess Mike McCarthy knew something that we all didn't know. And sometimes in the NFL, mind games are part of it. You know, Mike McCarthy came out and he just wanted to inject a little energy into his squad. You know, put them on the defense of saying, now you got to go up and you got to live up to these words. And boy, have they. Yeah. And no flags on that play as KZ came in. And Neal with a big hit. It's the second time on this drive we've seen Adam Humphreys just get crushed after an incomplete. Sometimes your quarterback's got to protect you, and sometimes you got to protect yourself. <laughs> you got to start throttling down. We saw this earlier in the drive. The Washington bench was calling for a hit to the head, but those are two clean, just hard hits to the body. Just take a take a toll on an offensive player, that's for sure. Play clock at zero. Don't think they got it off. Delay of game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. Heard Randy Gregory just say to Kyle Allen, you got lucky. <laughs> Nobody blocked him. So if Kyle Allen wasn't going to throw that ball quick, he was going to get Randy Gregory right in his back. Yeah, you, know, you think about Mike McCarthy. We told you, obviously, missed a game against New Orleans. Whole family had to deal with COVID. And thankfully, they were okay. Just got back to the facility on Thursday, and, you know, yeah, of course, so he had the guarantee. In, in reality, what's he supposed to say? Oh, I, I feel like we're going to lose the game. I mean, you're asked a question. But I thought it was interesting talking to him overall about where Dallas is and with the staff on second and 15. Allen loads up, throws. Sims, who caught the touchdown earlier. Good footwork there. He's inbounds for a first down. You know, they won a game without McCarthy coaching. Now, granted, Dan Quinn came in. He was a head coach before, but there's a lot of moving parts. And Mike said, you know, I think it's so important to have balance as a coaching staff, and that's really helped the team. I'd never heard that before. Yeah, he wanted to make sure he's, I want to have balance of coaches with past head coaching experience, and then also mix in some of the young, new generation. 
They bring fresh ideas. They bring fresh energy and enthusiasm. He said, at no, more, at no point in my career has it been this important. You factor in at any given moment, a head coach or an assistant coach could be put on the COVID list or be taken out of a game. And immediately the responsibilities shift amongst your staff. They saw it last week, you know, on the Thursday night game when they played shorthanded. Having guys like Dan Quinn step up. Tight end coaches are now coaching the offensive line. So the value of a coaching staff has never been more important than it is in today's NFL. Washington trying to put together some positive vibes on this drive. Dejon Harris, sorry, Jonathan Williams, who gets some time, just brought him up from the practice squad. A lot of moves for these two games. And you know, it's interesting, with the coaches and making decisions, and there's Parsons, who continues his campaign for Defensive Player of the Year. But Dan Quinn told us, you know, in some ways, the injuries fortunate. As right over the middle, Williams, seam inside the 15 and down to the 10. It'll be a first and goal. You know, with guys that have been out, they had to use Parsons in his pass rush only role early in the year. And, you know, not that they didn't know he could rush the passer, but they're like, oh, he could rush the passer really well. Yes, injuries are not welcome, right? No one wants to see guys go down to injury. As getting close down to the two is Williams. But if anything, losing Demarcus Lawrence early and then losing Gregory with the calf strain for a period of time there, they had no choice. They had to play Micah Parsons at defensive end by necessity. And all of a sudden, they looked around. They said, you know, there's a whole lot we could do with this guy. There's Williams and surging to the end zone. And they say no, he's down just short to be a third and goal. It looks like he's just shy. He kind of reaches the ball across. They go hurry. Try to get it in this time, and it's still no signal. Waiting, maybe? Yeah, I don't think he got in at all. Allen saying, wait a second. Kind of hard, hard to argue. He doesn't even have the ball anymore. Watch the penetration here on the top of your screen. He's just met before he even has a chance to get his momentum moving forward. Yeah, I think that's the right call. Be a fourth and goal coming up. Cowboys fans are on their feet here. That drive might not seem overly important in the grand scheme of things as far as today is concerned, but depending on Taylor Heineke, you know, you hope that he's not out for a long period of time. Nice job in here by the offensive line, getting a nice push. See Brandon Sheriff, he really gets a nice push, but to get Kyle Allen some game action here in this system, lead a scoring drive, if for whatever reason they need to turn this offense over to Kyle Allen, Again, these reps are all vital as part of the entire path of the season. And of course, they hope Taylor Heineke comes back. But if he doesn't, we we'll turn this thing over to Kyle Allen. These are very, very meaningful reps. And they'll go for two. Allen going end zone. No. Seals Jones had his hands on it, but could not bring it in. It's a good ball. Back shoulder fade, goal line fade, kind of throw it to that outside. You know, try to get to the outside shoulder, the defensive player, you see him look back. Now you got to pivot, like a basketball pivot. Just can't quite hang on. It's a good ball, good placement, just can't quite snag it. So 27-14, 5.09 to go. Five more minutes in this thing? Oh my God. Even better. And so, look, we've seen crazier things. It's still a two-score game, so you're saying, wait, Prescott's still going to be in there, but still got to finish the game. 
There's still a lot of time. 5.09 to go. So Washington's got three timeouts. I mean, if they force a three and out, they're still in the game. It's going to be interesting to see what they do here. Dallas has their hands team. See C.D. Lamb, he's lined up here. Central Wilson's at the top of the screen. They're the hands recovery guys. But what you see a lot of teams do here is they take advantage of the hands team and they try to bloop kick it and they try to pin the receiving team deep in their own territory. With over five minutes, see what they go with. They do kick it away. Hardy has it. And he's going to get up about the 23-yard line. The Cowboys looking to salt this game away, but still a little bit more work to do. Well, you came on the air. You talked about if I'm Dallas, I'm throwing it all over the yard today, right? That's what you wanted to see. That You said that was the answer to cure the run game. It seemed like if you're going to run the ball, this might be the time to do it. The value of a run game is when are you able to run the ball? Can you run the ball in the fourth quarter with the lead when the defense knows you're going to run it? That's the sign of an effective run game. Here is the perfect time for them to develop that. Clemens stays in, not Elliott. Again, I feel like they've just tried to give Elliott a break for the first time in a while with that knee, with Clement getting all these reps with Pollard out today. Dallas would love, Mike McCarthy and Kellen Moore, they would love to be able to turn to their offensive line and say, hey, big guys, we are handing this ball off. We got the ball with five minutes, called the four-minute offense. Granted, there's not four minutes, but that's what the offense calls it. And the idea is we want to get two first downs, we want to get past the two-minute warning, and then the end result would be, of course, we want to finish the game taking a knee. Got a long way to go, but that's the process of a four-minute offense. On the fake, Prescott pumps, throws, intercepted! Holcomb's got it with a pass to the end zone! Holcomb still on his feet, and he's in! Oh, my goodness! This game just changed dramatically! A pick six for Cole Holcomb! Wow. So everyone's expecting them to run the ball. They just do a simple boot naked. He's trying to throw the ball in the middle of the field. Dalton Schultz is wide open. But Dak just doesn't see Cole Holcomb. He undercuts the ball. And here we are a few minutes ago talking big picture KB of these teams moving forward. And we're an extra point away from it being a six point game with tons of time. I mean, that's amazing. <laughs> and they had a chance to run out the clock. Holcomb, second interception of the year. He runs it back 31 yards. And it's a seven-point game, and an extra point would make it six with 4.13 to go. Holy cow. Extra point is blocked. Of course it is. I think C.J. Goodwin is the guy that got his hands on it. Watch Dolan Schultz. He's just going to run a naked. It's just a basic boot. They're going to show run action left. Now he's wide open. Cole Holcomb relocates. Now this is the window. He's got a guy in his face. He doesn't see Holcomb undercut that ball. He throws it right to his chest. Wow. Nobody can bring him down, and this game just flipped. You'd like to see Dalton Schultz continue to go. There's my window. He kind of stops behind the defender. Dak doesn't see him. On those nakeds, you want to stay on the move. You want to keep running into open space. He decides to sit down right behind Holcomb, who does the rest. Wow. I mean, it's it's 27-8 with four and chains left. Washington goes on a long TD drive with a lot of backups in the game. They score. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, Holcomb with a pick six. It's a one-score game, and there's a lot of time left. And now fumble. Dallas picks it up. Clevin, and he's buried. you believe this? <laughs> The NFL, every time you think you know, the NFL is very quick to remind you, we all know nothing. 
And we're just enjoying the ride. And now, now it's getting a little spicy. Seven point game, 4.07 to go. The crowd is up and into it. First down, they will run it. As you see, Elliott is back in there, not much there. See Washington choosing to use their timeout, they will. And so the extra point, which would have made it a six point game. The problem with the extra point was it took them 15, 20 seconds to get the entire team on the field. Some of the defensive linemen who were their backups, the sudden touchdown by Washington, not everybody responded quickly. Their timing was rhythm. That affects the kicker. These teams are just falling apart. Second and seven. They'll run it again. Elliott cuts back, and Elliott with a strong surge out to the 20. Third down and three coming up. Nice cut there by Zeke. You see Washington really stretch that play sideways, horizontally, sticks his foot and just hits it to make this a third and, and medium. Watch all the flow go to arm left. Just sticks it. Now he comes right back behind Steele, the right tackle. Who remembers in the game, Lyle Collins got ejected coming to Dak's defense earlier. We got two new tackles. Both their starting tackles from today are out of the game. Third and three. Prescott to throw. Slant dropped incomplete. Fuller was there, may have gotten a hand on it. And Washington's going to get it back. Little change of pace there for Washington. Earlier in the game, Kev, we've pointed out they've shown a lot of those pressures and then dropped out and played zone. This time they're playing straight man. William Jackson, he kind of built his career early on as a man defender. Kendall Fuller, I'm sorry, but wow, what a great job they're getting off the field by Washington. Here is Carter. Going to let it bounce. And it'll stop right at the 30. Well, a minute and a half ago, it looked like this game was over. And, you know, turns out now it's not. As you said, we know you played in the league for 15 years. And if you know nothing, we all certainly know nothing. I mean, it felt like it was over. But now here's Washington with a chance with plenty of time to go and try and tie the game. And it did feel over. It fell over to everybody in this, in this stadium, including us. But that's why the message of every team it's not unique to these, is just keep playing. Just keep playing. You never know what's going to happen. It takes one thing to flip. I'll tell you what, they've had a few things flip, and they're a touchdown drive by Kyle Allen from having a miraculous comeback. Allen stands in, delivers Sims, who had the touchdown, and Cam Sims picks up seven yards. And this Dallas D, which has dominated for almost this entire day, now they're put on the spot. Yeah, we said earlier, sometimes you need your stars to play like stars. Well, Dallas right now is reeling a little bit. They need one of these guys up front to have a game-changing play, a sack, a tackle for loss. Allen going for it all, looking for Carter. He can't hang on. It was in his hands for a big gain. Third down. Wow, this ball couldn't be thrown better by Kyle Allen. Carter just can't reel it in. He's got, he's on top of the defender. He's deeper using his speed down the field. Kyle Allen drops it in the bucket and he just can't come down with it. They still got two downs here. You're telling Kyle Allen, don't, don't go crazy. You got two downs to pick up this first. Pressure, Allen in trouble. Throws it, that might be a fumble. It's loose, it's picked up by Dallas. Curse has it. And now we have to make sure. So there's two things to look at. Were his knee down? Was his knee down? And was his hand coming forward? Or either one of those things happening, they could be bailed out. It's going to depend on what 
His, his knees are not down, so this is going to be whether or not his hand was deemed to be going forward, resulting in an incomplete. Because I don't believe, KB, that his knees were down. I'm with you on the knees. And this is a close call. Ruling on the field was a fumble and a recovery. The ruling on the field is a fumble recovered by Dallas. Let's bring on our rules expert, Dean Blandino. Dean ruling his fumble on the field. Think they stay with it? I think they do. Yeah, the two things, it was the knee, and the knees are up, so he's not down. Then it's the hand coming forward with control. Looks like that ball might be coming off the fingertips before the hand comes forward. The ruling was fumble, and I'm not sure there's enough to overturn this. I see Gregory all over Allen. It's, uh, you know, I, I feel like Dean, as usual, is spot on. It's so close, but the ruling on the field is fumble. I just, you watch it a million times. I don't know if it's enough to say, right? Yeah, I think so, too. I think this one's not going to be overturned. I think Dean, I think Dean hit it spot on. It seemed as his hand started to go forward, that ball was sliding back off his fingertips. And there's Randy Gregory, who had his first interception of his career earlier. If it holds, would be the sack and the forced fumble, which would, for all intents and purposes, seal the game. But this game never seems like it wants to die, so who knows? Now let's see. Big call right now. Really taking their time here. I feel like at some point we might just be sending it to not only, you know, Joe and Troy, but Alan Chris later. I mean, it's, <laughs> oh, man. it's been a long one. That's obviously a huge call. They're taking their time with it. You heard what Dean Blandino said, said it should stand, should be a fumble, Dallas ball, and they get a chance again to try and run it out. But it's taken a while. game was 27 to 8 with under five minutes to go. Washington went on what seemed at the time like kind of a meaningless long drive, some backups in the game. And then Cole Holcomb had a pick six and gave the game a completely different feel. Defense forced a three and out. Now let's hear the call. After review, the ruling on the field stands. First down and down. And so there it is. Randy Gregory, what an impact he's had coming back after missing the last four games with a calf injury. The sack, the force fumble with 2.24 to go. Two timeouts for Washington. And the two-minute warning. So theoretically, they still could get the ball back if they hold them. And at this stage, you're not going to say anything's out of the question. No. Here's Elliott. They're going to try and close out the game and settle wraps him up. And see if Washington calls a timeout. And they do. This was back to the fumble. And Mike McCarthy says, yeah, I like that call. I mean, Washington's going to need some help. Uh, they don't want to give up too many more yards here. They want to try to make this field goal attempt, assuming they can get a stop in these next two downs as long as possible. Their only hope is to pray for a miss and give their ball back to their offense. But we said Dallas's stars needed to make a play, and Randy Gregory's been a star coming back today from injury. And They're already in field goal range. They have CeeDee Lamb in the backfield this time. They're going to pitch it to him. Coming to the near side. Lamb. Good cut. And gets belted inside the 25-yard line. Holcomb there. And he stayed in bounds. So the clock will run until Washington calls their final timeout. So second half recap. I mean, you could take it even for the last few minutes. So Washington was down, right? I mean, they're down 24 to nothing. And then this unbelievable throw to Cam Sims. 43-yard touchdown, they go for two. You're like, all right, they're down by two scores. Make it a game. But Dallas just kept on chugging. But Washington has a long drive, gets in. Then Holcomb just moments ago with this pick six. Washington forces a three and out. But then Gregory with the sack force fumble and a chance for Dallas to run it out. 
But a third and four here. It's not over just yet. On the fake pitch, Prescott doesn't get it to Elliott. Will run. Will get it first down. Will take it down to the two-minute warning. Prescott picks it up with his legs. And the Cowboys trying to finally finish this one out. Two-minute warning from Landover. Dak, Cowboys, up seven, looking to finish it off. Original chicken sandwich is now on, two for six bucks. Well, this game, you thought it was over ten times. Washington made a game, had their chances, but Dak Prescott with that run on third down, Washington out of timeouts, now they could take a knee. And Greg, you just think back, you pointed it out, right? Carter had a bomb in his lap from Allen that he just dropped inside the 40-yard line. Would have been a 33-yard gain, and then the fumble came right after that. It's typically how it works. You just slightly miss an opportunity to make a big play, and then it's so funny how often it seems on the very next play, they take it right away from you. That was the case there with the fumble on the ensuing snap. Kyle Allen trying to keep a play alive, avoid a sack, just couldn't quite get the ball out of his hand to face fourth down, and Dallas been able to run this baby out. And we'll take a knee, do it one more time, and that will be that. And the Cowboys, we look at the playoff picture, going to improve their standing, going to go up to nine and four. And really, most importantly, they're going to have a three-game lead in the NFCs. Washington was their main threat. And now Washington and Philadelphia both will be 6-7 and seven with four games to go after this. Yeah, Dallas handled their business, right? The first goal of every team across the league is you want to win your division. Today went a long way towards putting Dallas out in front. Tough for any of those other teams in the NFCs to catch them. But Washington, again, on the other side, as disappointing as today was, They've got a shot. If they can put the pieces back together, deal with some of the injuries, they got a shot. State Farm postgame show is coming your way next. A lot of action in the NFL today. But here, 27-20 Cowboys up their lead to three games in the division. State Farm postgame next. We'll see you in a minute after this. Jaden 